It's the final day of the Arkansas high school football season, and two more state champions will be crowned as we welcome you to War Memorial Stadium. First up on this Saturday afternoon, it's the 2A state championship between the Junction City Dragons and the Fordyce Red Bugs. As we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, my name is Scott Denman, joined today by R.J. Hawk. Our thanks to Bobby Swafford for the first four games, and now you're sliding in for oh. the next two, and we should have a couple of good ones here today. R.J., when you look at this 2A final, or if you if you pull back and look actually at all the games that we've had over the last two weekends, eight of those teams made it to the state championship game a year ago. Yeah. Only three of them actually won it last year. Junction City is one of those teams. Yeah, and when you think about Junction City, this is a team that's been here three years in a row, and and tradition just is a mouthful. You, you think about everything they've done. Dating back to 2003, this is a team that's won seven state championships. They've been here. They've done it. They, when, when you think of football in Junction City, you think state championships. And really, that's all started since 2003. And uh, then you look at Fordyce, on the other hand. This is a team that mm -hmm. uh, you've got a, a lot of tradition with Paul Bear Bryant down in that yeah, area. Yeah. You know, football kind of started with him down that area. But it's been since the 90s since they've won a state championship. 1991 to be exact. They went back to back in 1991. So, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. This was a game earlier this year between Fordyce and Junction City that ended in a 14-12 win in favor of Junction City. Now, what a lot of people don't know, they see that score and they say, wow, that was a slobber knocker of a football game. Well, it was because there was a massive monsoon yeah. that came through the area that night, and so there were a lot of turnovers in the ball game. In fact, Fordyce had a chance to win the ball game as in the fourth quarter they were driving, got it down to the Junction City five-yard line, ended up fumbling the ball and lost the game. And so uh, I expect the same type of game today, Scott. All right, let's go down and check in as we you just saw the coin toss. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Eric Sullivan's down on the sidelines. Yeah, Scott and RJ, great to be back with you guys on this uh, Saturday edition of state championships here in Arkansas. Two of my favorite mascots in the state. You got the Red Bugs and the Dragons going at it. And it's kind of like uh, RJ was saying, it's the uh, regulars here, which is four dice, to a 10th state championship game in the last 17 years and the welcome backs. And you talk about forward ice football, let's take a look at their crowd on the other side of the stadium. The entire yeah. city is on hand, all in red and black, ready to bring home a state championship to their tradition-rich family. We've got two big playmakers we want to mention right off the back. Harlandis Frazier of uh, Junction City, guys. 29 yards per catch. And Jakeem Brown, quarterback for the Red Bugs. He does it all. So keep your eyes on those two special players, guys. Well, I've got to be honest. I looked it up before we went on the air. There are about 4,000 people in Fordyce. Yeah. Not today. No. Not, nobody's there today as you take a look at those sidelines. They're hungry. Yeah. And, and you know, Fordyce, as we talked about, Paul Bear Bryant, the, the stadium is named after uh, Coach Coach Bryant, and really everything in, is centered around football in Fordyce. And I would imagine if you're wanting to go to the, the pharmacy or if you're wanting to go to the gas station in Fordyce Day, they're all closed because they're here at War Memorial Stadium. And there are the Fordyce Red Bugs about to make their way onto the field. You saw Junction City just a moment ago. It's the Dragons and the Red Bugs for the 2A title, the first of a doubleheader here on the final game the final day of high school football in the state of Arkansas. We're just a couple of minutes away from kickoff. As you watch the Red Bugs go onto the field, we'll take a break and return to get this thing underway. You're watching the high school football state championships on AETN Sports. One of the best things about being a community-focused bank like Centennial is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief, the Chamber of Commerce and Civic Activities, we enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. More information available at mile100bank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. So what is that? He's, where they hit you in the damn mouth, they don't stop. Oh. There you see the sidelines for Junction City. First year head coach, Brad Smith. He was the defensive coordinator for this Junction City football team. So he's in his first year. If he wins the state championship, or if his Dragons, I should say, win the state championship today, he would be the first coach to do it at Junction City in their first year. But he's been there for all of them. All those state titles, he's been on the staff, but his first year as head coach.
And, Scott, you know, one thing, if you think about Junction City, Stephen Jones was the, the football coach down there last year. The tradition of coaches that have come out of there, Stephen Jones went on to be at El Dorado, and he's trying to turn that program around. And it's just one coach after next that's been involved with the program down at Junction City. They know tradition down there, and uh, that's exactly what Brad Smith's done. He was the defensive coordinator last year for Junction City. Uh, in his first year, goes 11-1. and one, and, and, you know, you and I talked to him on Monday and said, what's this mean to you? What's this to be able to get this team back to a state championship? He said, it's an expected outcome with fans in Junction City. They expect to be at War Memorial Stadium each and every year, so it was really nothing new for him. Coach Smith told me earlier in the week that they respect Fordyce players. They socialize together. There's only 65 miles that separate Fordyce and Junction City. They're friends off the field, but they certainly – our competitors on it as we are set for action. Fordyce actually did win the coin toss, but they have deferred their option to the second half. So it'll be the Dragons on offense first. The area sledge there, the kicker for Fordyce, will put the football on the tee, back deep to return for Junction City, Ja'Kyron Cook and Harlandis Frazier. Those two are the biggest playmakers on this team, so it makes sense that they would be back in kickoff return. Doubleheader Saturday here at War Memorial Stadium. The 3A coming later today, but right now all eyes on the 2A title game. And we're underway. It's a short kick, feel it at the 25-yard line, and here come the Dragons. Looking for room around the edge, it's Jamie Carroll, and Carroll has run out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. So good field position here to start for Junction City. It's a 13-yard kickoff return for Carroll. You know, one thing, Scott, both these teams don't – they don't pride themselves in special teams. And both coaches told us that earlier in the week. And uh, I was noticing there, Junction City had guys playing – you know, their deep men were all the way back at the five-yard line. There was a lot of space between the up man and the deep, deep guys. And that time you saw Jamie Carroll be able to take the ball and get a nice return out of it. And they'll go with the end around on the first play from scrimmage. Frazier looking for room on the outside. There is none. Wrapped up in the backfield by Trey Merritt, the linebacker for Fordyce. And it's a negative play. Maybe they'll give him the line of scrimmage. It's right at it. But we're going to call it second and 11. Well, that, that's going to be a key for this Fordyce team today is if they can seal the edge and not allow for Junction City to, to go side to side and get positive plays. If they can seal that edge off, they're going to be successful on defense and have a chance to win the state championship. Ja'Kyron Cook in the pistol formation is the running back. He gets the call, and he gets positive yardage for the first time for Junction City. But again, it is a short gain, only two yards. Hagen Sullivan, the defensive tackle for the Red Bugs, made the stop. So a big third down early. RJ mentioned it was a low-scoring affair the last time these two teams met. Weather had a lot to do with it. Passing down for Hutchison. And he's picked off on his first pass of the day by Diarius Sledge. And Sledge has run out of bounds inside the 30-yard line by the quarterback, Brady Hutchinson, and a big turnover to start. And, and you know, that's Hutchinson's only his fourth interception of the season, Scott. And uh, really just a bad pass. He, he rolled to his left that time to try to set up the play and just never got his feet set and threw it right to that Fordyce red bug. And, uh, that's his fourth interception of the season, and now Fordyce has great field position for their first drive of the ball game. Making their third title game appearance, but the first since 1991. Jaheim Brown is the quarterback, and it's an eye formation for this Red Bug offense. It's the fullback, Cortee Shelton, on the first carry, and not a lot there for the leading rusher for the Red Bugs. He has 1,134 yards rushing coming in, but he got about two there. Well, Shelton, not a very big guy, only 5'8", 178 pounds. But one thing his coaching staff prides him on is that he always keeps those legs churning. Every time he, he has contact, he continues to fight for extra yardage. May not be a big guy, but do, delivers a big punch. Jaheim Brown, also a threat to run it. This is a running quarterback. He has 77 carries and 400-plus yards on the season. They'll keep it on the ground with Shelton again, and Shelton's got nowhere to go. That inside handoff 
Junction City is waiting on it. Players everywhere making the stop there. One of the first guys there was Jamarco Singleton. You know, one thing that you're going to see in this game, the defensive line for Junction City is a lot bigger than that Fordyce offensive line. And you've seen just so far in these first two run plays that they've penetrated the gaps and really didn't allow for Junction City to get anything going out of the backfield. Fordyce has got to figure out some way to get that ball outside and not allow for those interior defensive lines to make, to make play. Third down and nine. And they'll keep it on the ground with Hudson on the pitch. Hudson turns the corner and shuffles his way down to the 23-yard line, but that's well shy of the first down. It is a pickup of five, but that's almost a play call, RJ. You'd expect that they're going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, well, this, this part of the field, you, you're not gonna, you don't have a field goal kicker that can make a, a field goal this long, unless they did the Yarnell's kick before the ball game. And <laughs> I know our, some of our viewers weren't able to see that, but yeah. there's a kid from Fordyce that lined up from the 25-yard line and hit it halfway up into the north side stands. He may be putting his uniform yes. on back in the locker room right now if, if Coach Tim Rogers saw that. But we're going for it right now on fourth down and five. Big play early in the game. Out of the eye formation. It's the tailback. Hudson. Hudson spins out of a tackle. He's inside the 20, and he is right at the first down marker. This is going to depend on the spot. Well, that was a great run because he was dead to rights about two yards away from the sticks, and he made a spin move and got out of a tackle and dove for the first down. That's going to be really close. If they, if they have to measure, they're going to have to bring the sticks on from the far side of the field to come and check this thing. And, uh, you know, you always wonder when, he, when you have to bring those sticks all the way across uh, if you may lose a couple inches or not. So, We'll see, that it does look like they're going to bring them on all the way from that far east side stands. Well, our eagle eye, Eric Sullivan, is right there at the yard marker. In fact, now I see him. He, he's getting down low. He's trying to get the best view he can down there. We'll, we'll go down Eric. and check in with Eric. Guys, I think he's about a half inch short of this. <laughs> I did not get the best spot in the world. We had more of the closest one ever last night. And, I, hey, make that six inches, boys. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be Junction City's football. I love how Eric got down like he was on a putting green <laughs> and, and was eyeing that first down right there at the line. Great job, Eric. And hey, we, we want to remind folks, starting Monday, you can relive all the action and watch all the championship games at AETN.org slash sports. So the defense is taking center stage here early in this 2A title game with big stops and interception for Fordyce, turned over Junction City on their first possession, and now the Dragons defense get it right back, gets it right back for Fordyce, or for Junction City, I should say, and the Dragons offense back out onto the field. Ja'Kyron Cook is the running back on the counter right, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage and a good tackle by Joshua Harrington for no gain. Well, that was a busted play from the beginning, Scott. Hutchinson, he turned to his left. There was nobody there, so he spun back around and gave it to his running back, and that allowed for this Fordyce defensive line to get in there and make a play and got him right back to the line of scrimmage for second down. Ja'Kyron Cook, a 1,600-yard rusher so far this season. On second down and 10, they're going to throw again. Up the near sidelines, double coverage, and it's broken up. Intended for Harlandis Frazier, but that one was nearly picked by Jaquez Cross. Well, this Fordyce defense is, is really looking for the pass, and they, they know that they can shut down the run, and so that's going to make Hutchison throw the ball, and that time the speed of the secondary for Fordyce closed down and almost had another interception. I think Cross would have had it if he didn't yeah. collide with his own guy yeah. in coverage. It's third down and 10 now. Hutchison. On the reverse, it's Frazier. Frazier's got room. It closes quickly, though, and he's knocked out of bounds, well shy of the first down by Diaria Sledge. And great closing speed by Sledge on that far side as, you know, he was probably six to seven yards away from the play, and he was able to run him, to, run him down, take a great angle, push him out of bounds, and now it brings up fourth down and six. And quarterback Hutchinson still on the field, but he is also a punter for Junction City. They'll run the quarterback and sometimes actually the running back. Ja'Kyron Cook does the punting. So it's fourth down and the Dragons to kick it away and they do. Not a bad punt that gets a good bounce inside the 45 yard line. Let's see they'll mark it out at the 41 and a half yard line. Well, the field position battle certainly won by Fordyce here early on. Yeah, they, they've done a really good job defensively, slowing down and not allowing for Junction City to have any momentum offensively. And now they've got to get their offense going a little bit and get first downs, have positive yards, and, and do it on first and second down. 
Hey, stay in the know about AETM programs and announcements. Text AETN to 313131 for updates straight to your phone. Second offensive possession for the Red Bugs. Six-foot quarterback, Jaheim Brown, 200 pounds, a junior, running the show. Quarty Shelton is in the backfield, and he's going to be a lead blocker this time for the quarterback. Brown is going to be denied the 45-yard line, so that's only going to be about a three-yard gain. Jamarco Singleton there for the stop for the Dragons. And, and Scott, we saw in the last Fordyce drive that their most success was when they bounced it outside. When they got outside the tackles, that's where they picked up their most yards. So far, we've seen any time that Fordyce has run between the tackles, they've not picked up very much yardage. This, this, that's only about four yards gained between the tackles so far. Out of the shotgun, Brown moves the pocket to the sidelines, wide open, and a nice catch made at the 44-yard line by Diarius Sledge. He got the foot down, and that will move the sticks for the Red Bugs. It's a gain of 12. Great athleticism right there as he makes the catch, knows where he is on the field, and is able to toe tap and get that one foot down to stay in bounds and get the first down for Fordyce. Nice job by the senior Sledge. His 27th catch of the football season. They have time to breathe between plays in this game. When Shiloh Christian was going up and down the field last night, <laughs> it was a little more hustle on our end. Yeah, there was uh, about three seconds uh, from the time the ball was set to snap for that Shiloh Christian team last night. Handoff goes to Shelton again. Inside, again, not much there to RJ's point. No gain on the play. Yeah, and they keep running it to the left side, and that's your bigger side of this defensive line for Junction City that's getting a great push. They haven't tried to the right side yet, but, boy, if and I, I know that this coaching staff probably knows a lot more than I do when it comes to their offense, but it just seems so far early on anything outside and in the passing game is what's working for Fordyce. Well, we mentioned Coach Smith was, has been the defensive coordinator prior to this season for Junction City. He told us earlier in the week, you play good defense, you're going to be in a football game, and that's what Junction City prides themselves on. Brown's going to keep it. Not much there. There's a flag down coming in from behind the play. It's a gain of two for the moment. I would imagine you're probably going to see a hold right here. Our referee is Scott Earlywine today. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty, single. Yeah, anytime the, the quarterback's got that much time to be able to pull it down and run with it, and you see the, the penalty flag come from the white hat, nine times out of ten it's going to be a, a holding on the offense. Hey, do you know somebody that, somebody that couldn't make it to the game today? Remind them to watch statewide right here on AETN. That is such a significant penalty holding is because it can really blow up a drive in a hurry. It was going to be third and probably eight. And that's going to be second down and 22. Back on their own end is Fordyce, their first penalty of the game. Shelton the lone setback and a quick throw out to Jaquez Cross, and Cross gets a couple. He's out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. Ridden out there by Cam Torrance. You know, Scott, I, I think the most impressive thing with both these teams is the speed. You, you see the speed on the outside uh, on both def defensive lines and really in the secondary that uh, they fly to the football. Not just Fordyce, not just Junction City, they both do. They got a lot of athletes on both these teams, and uh, that's really been the most impressive thing for me so far here in the early going. Well, you talk about him great athlete, Jaquez Cross, the guy who just caught that pass, 20 total touchdowns this year. Yeah. The guy has nine interceptions on defense and four non-offensive touchdowns. Oh, and by the way, he can catch the football. Over the middle, and it is dropped in and out of the hands of Darius Sledge. The contact had something to do with it there. Well, and that one was almost intercepted as he bobbled it, and Junction City almost had a chance. Watch here on the replay as they set it up, and as it hit off his hands, you had two Junction City players right there, and it hit him, I believe, for Junction City. That was Ja'Kyron Cook, who had a chance to go in and make the interception, just hit it right off his belly and hit the ground. So Sledge will kick it away for Fordyce, and Ja'Kyron Cook is back deep to return. They will leave this one alone. Oh, he does pick it up at the last second. Dangerous 
fielding there by Cook, but he will hang on to the football, and Junction City gets it back. It's a 36-yard punt. You know, I, I say this doing college football games, that anytime that you, you see the ball and you know that you're not going to take run to the sideline. Get, <laughs> get away from that thing. So Flee there's, from temptation. Yes, get, get away. <laughs> I, I see college athletes, they do it all the time, and I'm just like, get, just get out of there. Let's go down to the field, check in with Eric. Guys, if you're wondering why it's such a slow start on offense for both teams, well, right here at Junction City sideline, they script their first 10 to 12 plays trying to figure out something. Even though they have played this team before, they're really trying to set something up for later on down in this, particularly maybe this drive here. So it, it'll open up, boys, I yeah, promise you. It is a conservative play calling mindset for both teams right now. It's a great point. Cook with one of the better run gains so far on the afternoon for Junction City there. Brings up a second down and five. Hutchison hands off to Cook again. Cook hitting the backfield. He spins forward to the 26-yard line, so it'll be a yard gain. Trey Merritt makes the stop, and, boy, the tackling up front for both of these teams has been very good early on. Nobody's missing any tackles. Yeah, you know, I, it's a very fundamental program for both these teams. You, you work on the little things, and you can, sell, you can tell right there on the tackle. Cook again. And, boy, it looked like the head of steam he had. He was going to get the first down, but he's brought down shy. Darius Sledge stopped him after a two-yard gain. It's third down again. Boy, Scott, I look down that defensive line for Fordyce. And I look, I, fourth down, I'm sorry. All you see is the big number 76 down there, Ethan Carpenter, 6'3", 265. And he just clogs up the middle down there. Between him and Tristan Thrower, 5'11", 255. Those two guys in the middle of that defensive line for Fordyce, they're not allowing a lot of big-time running plays. So here's an interesting play call. Hutchison's going to be out there likely whether they punt it or not, but it looks like they're going to go for it. They're out of the pistol set, so Cook is the running back. Fourth and less than a yard. Hutchison has to keep it himself, and he has the first down. Didn't look like that was the intended play call, but he finds room off the left side to move the chains. That's a gutsy call early in this game. Well, and a busted play right there. Hutchison, well, it looked like he was supposed to hand it off. There was nobody there. So he said, you know what, I'm going to take it myself. Whoop, and goes left side and is able to make it past the first down marker. And great job by a leader of this offense to, to know where he is on the field to get the first down. That's about three or four times that's happened. He's turned to the wrong side to hand off as Cook gets loose. And Junction City gets another first down. Ja'Kyron Cook with a 14-yard gain. Corti Shelton the stop for Fordyce. Yeah, great job picking his lane, trying to bob and weave and find a way to just pick up positive yards. And there you go once again with the athleticism that we've talked about. Just being patient, finding areas to run, and uh, did a great job right there. Jamal Johnson is the running back now. Keeper by Hutchison over the left side. And with Johnson blocking, he's going to get a five-yard gain. I'll tell you, at the rate that uh, this is going, Sky, with both these teams running the football, this might be the quickest high school football game in the history of high school football. Down to 3.30 left here in the first quarter. And no one has drawn first blood yet. Second and five. The flip to Frazier. And Frazier cannot find the edge again. Boy, Fordyce right there to stuff him for no gain. And that's a great job. Once again, they tried to bounce it to the outside, and Fordyce was right there with the speed of those linebackers and even the corners, recognizing that it was a sweep, and they were right there to make a play, wrapped up, took him to the ground for, for the uh, tackle, and it looked like the ball yeah, came out. Did. Yeah, And did Fordyce recover the football? I never saw an indication. No, I, I think that Junction City jumped back yeah. on it. and It looked so, like on the replay maybe yeah. they did. Well, we're not going to get a replay, it doesn't look like, or a review. If they snap the football, we won't, and we won't. Johnson gets the carry. Boy, he gets a big head of steam, but right there into that brick wall for Fordyce, Joshua Harrington makes the stop. He will get three, but that's going to be fourth down. It looks like it's going to be a great run, yeah. and, boy, they just clogged the middle. Well, and that's a great job by Harrington. Just goes heads up with him. Harrington stands 5'11", 220 pounds. He's one of the standouts for this defense, and he saw him went straight you know, man, mano a mano and was able to take him down, and now it's another fourth down for Junction City. Well, they went for it on fourth and less than a yard on their own end, and they're going to go for it again on fourth down and three in plus territory. They'll give it to Ja'Kyron Cook. Cook has nowhere to go. 
All sorts of white jerseys in there. Cortese Shelton, the first to touch him. And it will be another turnover on downs. A minute 49 left to play in the first quarter here at War Memorial Stadium, and there's still no score in the 2A title game. Back in a moment. As time passes and the years go by, change is something we all experience. But no matter how the world changes from year to year, the one thing that will never change is the true meaning of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. No score late first quarter, 2A state championship game. It's been a defensive battle to say the least, and yards are hard to come by. Fordyce has threatened. They've been on Junction City's end a couple of times thanks to a turnover early in the game, but so far on fourth down, the defenses have been sound. A handoff to Shelton, and Shelton is wrapped up immediately. He will not even get back to the line of scrimmage, and there were three or four purple jerseys there. First one there, Tate Barnett, one of two twin brothers on that Junction City defense. Scott, you're going to have to see some, some air attack just to get the, get the change up, you know, get these guys on their heels a little bit. You know, both teams trying to rely on the run, and that's their offense. So that's what's got them to this point, but you're going to have to see something over the top in order to relax this defense a little bit to, to open up the running game. Fordyce averages 152 yards through the air per game and 203 on the ground. So they're a little run heavy, but certainly can throw the football. Back to pass Brown, and he is going to unload up the near sidelines, and it's incomplete. Not much separation there. The intended receiver was Jaquez Cross, but great coverage by Harlandis Frazier on the play. Yeah, and, you know, found the ball early, was running step for step with Cross and was able to just knock that one down. Not the greatest of throws, but a uh, great job by Frazier to, to stay step for step and uh, force the third down. Hey, for a copy of all the state championship games, go to M&M Productions to place your order today. Third down and 10 for the Red Bugs. Jaheim Brown is the quarterback. Cordy Shelton is the running back. Brown with a quick out to Hudson. Hudson was the man in motion, but he cannot turn the corner. And it's fourth down again. No, I mean, that's side to side. You know, earlier for Fordyce, we talked about how if they could get it to the outside, get it outside the tackle box, they were showing success. Well, Junction City's woken up a little bit. And yeah. they, when they when you get it out in the flat area, they're, they're just flying to the football. And, um, Man, it's just making it tough. Tough row to hoe whether you go inside, outside, or where. These are well-prepared defenses. That's yeah. what it's coming down to. You can't get anything in the middle. You can't get anything on the outside. That means you're forced into a high-risk play of going up top. The area sledge will punt it away again for the Red Bugs. And he did not get all of that one, to say the least. Oh, my goodness. Off the side of his foot. That is about a three-yard punt and will give the Dragons their best starting field position of the game. Well, Scott, based on where the original marker was, it was a one-yard punt. <laughs> uh, I mean, because he, the the line judge on that far side, he, he literally took a step to his left, and, and that's where it went out. And so that'll be first and 10, great field position for Junction City. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. You said that uh, neither one of these teams have really good special teams. They don't. Try to kick field goals. You'll, if you do see one get in the end zone today, it's going to be going for two almost exclusively. First and ten for the Dragons and a handoff to Cook. Straight ahead. This time Cook does get 
a good push from his offensive line and gets inside the 40-yard line. Caleb Jones on the stop for Fordyce, but it's a pickup of seven. You know, Scott, we talked about the last meeting between both these teams. Ended in a 14-12 Junction City win, and uh, it's one of those things. It may have not been the weather that, that was the, the factor in this one. Both these defenses are really good. We're scoreless after one in Little Rock. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by The Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Welcome back, everybody. All defense so far in the Class 2A state championship game between Junction City and Fordyce. And, uh, Scott and RJ, you talk about how these teams do not kick the ball at all, but if they do, how about this bad boy? When have you seen the old school square toe shoe? So if we're 0 0 in the fourth quarter, this thing might win the game. We'll find out later on. Eric, thanks very much. You saw the first down or the second down run by Jamal Johnson. He was stopped by Trey Merritt, and he lost three on the play. So it's another third and long. And as we start the second quarter, the defense is still in charge. Hutchison is, again, going to keep it on the ground. Big hole this time for Johnson. Johnson loses the football, and Fordyce has recovered. Joshua Harrington falls on it. Johnson had the first down, and the Red Bugs are going to take over. Well, I mean, once again, another defensive play right here. He goes low and just... Coughs the football up right there, and it got stripped out, and Fordyce was able to jump on it. I believe for Fordyce, that was Corti Shelton who yep. was able to pull it out and uh, did a good job. You know, Eric talked about that old boot, right? For yeah. field. I remember doing a game for Fordyce. I think it was 2013. Clock's running down. They had no timeouts. They had an offensive lineman as a kicker, and he had to run to the sideline, put that boot on, run all the way across the field, and kick the game-winning field goal for, for uh, Junction City. Quick pass caught by Sledge, and Sledge works his way out close to the 40-yard line. They will give him that. It's a gain of about six or seven on the play. Uh, you look at the first quarter stats, RJ, and you're going to realize what we know by looking at the scoreboard. Not a lot of offense there. Fordyce 22 yards of total offense. Junction City 48 through the first 12 minutes of play. And so far, Junction City's passed the ball for negative one yards. And uh, Fordyce has thrown it for 12. It's a heavyweight fight. Keeper, now Brown's going to throw. Boy, he escaped one sack and now unloads deep up the field, and it is caught inside the 10 by Cross. What a job by Jaquez Cross. We got a penalty flag down, Scott, back at the line of scrimmage. But uh, if this stands, you know, it looks like it's probably going to be a hold on, on Fordyce. Junction it's, City thinks it is. And now it's going to the downfield on the offense. Five yard fumble, seven down. I, I just I hate that because that's, that's a kid making a play right there. I mean, he was outside the tackle spot, just made a great play, and, and really – just threw the ball up. It, it was the receiver who made the great play, but watch right here. Whoop, you get past one guy, step up, throw it up, 
and uh, you just play center field as if you're the wide receiver, make a play and get it down there. But because of an offensive lineman that went downfield just a touch too early, um, it, uh, it didn't allow for the, the play to stand. That's a second penalty on Fordyce in the football game. But, boy, sometimes it's the timeliness of penalties that really kill you. And that one would go into that category. So now it's second down and almost a full 10. Brown out of the pocket, fires over the middle behind his intended receiver in the double coverage. It was intended for Sledge, and it was nearly picked again. Ja'Kyron Cook in coverage for Junction City. And you, you're starting to see Fordyce start airing it out a little bit more. The, the run game has not been effective so far, so why not try to go over the top? Because what that will allow for is to allow the running game to open up just a little bit to, to pick up you know yards on first and second down. Well, you can see there they're not afraid to let Brown pull the trigger and throw it deep. He, he has a big arm. Yeah, he got a great arm. Just off on the accuracy a tad there. Third and ten. Brown again unloads, airs it out far sidelines, and it's incomplete. A lot of contact at the end of that play intended for Diarius Sledge. And boy, the Fordyce fans wanted a pass interference flag there. I, I almost don't agree with or don't disagree with him. But yeah, you, you're taught to, to play the ball, and you see right here the defensive back was playing the man. He'd gotten beat, so he threw his arm up there, but there was incidental contact right around the feet, so that's why the penalty flag was not called. The Red Bugs will be forced to punt again. The area sledge, six foot 175 senior, is the punter. Fordyce, I believe, is going to have to call a timeout. Play clock was close to zero. Yeah, I would assume that uh, with this being fourth down, it's only going to be a 30-second timeout. So both teams will will just reset for a moment, then go back out. But the play clock, as you said, Scott, was was rolling down. Hey, coming up in the AET and halftime show how sixth and goal is impacting the lives of Arkansas middle schoolers. Plus, join Ed Leon, AETN's chief operating officer, and learn about the state's original football program, the Ford Ice Red Bug. So much history in Ford Ice. You've already invoked the name of Bear Bryant a couple of times in this broadcast. Not born in Ford Ice, but raised in oh. Ford Ice. They claim him for sure. But here's the thing, Scott. I, I mean, Arguably, the between him and Saban, the greatest college football coach of all time, and, and he's from you know his name is on a stadium in a little bit town in South Arkansas yep. named Fordyce, Arkansas. I mean, just pretty pretty neat to, to have that. You know, if you go to Fordyce, they've got a, a big I, would, I wouldn't say a statue, but a a, a a plaque talking about Paul Bear Bryant. All right, after the timeout, Sledge will kick it away. It's a spiraling kick fielded on a big hop by Frazier. Frazier tries to find room up the near sidelines and gets a nice return out of that. It was a deep enough punt. He had room to get a little bit of that yardage back. And it'll be decent field position for Junction City. Somebody trying to break through here in a scoreless game early in the second quarter. You think after talking with Brad Harris this week, Scott, you know, former defensive coordinator for, for Junction City, he loves defense. And to see a game like this, he's loving every minute of this. This is a Junction City offense that averaged 47 points per game through their 12 contests this year. And the handoff goes to Cook. He finds room on the edge. And Cook is pounded out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. That's right at the stick, a 10-yard run. Cross knocked him out of bounds. It'll depend on the mark. I believe he's going to be just a hair shy up because they won't quite give him the 45-yard line. Oh, they're going to move the sticks. Okay, first down and 10 coming up for Junction City. Mentioned the 47 points per game, but by far their lowest point total of the season was when they played this Fordyce squad, only 14 points in that game. Cook on the carry there for a short game. Well, you, you look at the road to get here for Junction City. Hector, they won 50 to 14. 
Desarc, they won 46-14, and then Gurdon, 44-37. Um, Junction City's been putting up a lot of points, and uh, uh, when you look at Fordyce, they've, they've been showing their defense all throughout the postseason. Hand off Cook again, off the right side, spins off a tackle, he's got the first down. And Ja'Kyron Cook is inside the 40. Montrell Neal with the stop. Let's go down to Eric. All right, uh, Scott, there's some devoted fans out there. Meet Four Dice's Poochie. What's up, baby? Hey! How y'all doing out there? All the way from Fort Dice, Arkansas. Hey, you've got fans and players signing your blanket. That's pretty cool, buddy. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm, hey, I'm just thrilled to be here. Y'all gonna get some touchdowns now? Go get some touchdown, <laughs> baby. Go for All right. You said they love their football at Fordyce. I believe y'all, man. Hey, <laughs> one of about 4,000 in Fordyce who does. What was his name? Poochie? Poochie. I, think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I love it. I, Fordyce, hey, when we... We'll, we'll, we'll get a break here, man. We can do a pan of that entire far side. A ton of fans from Fort Ice making their way up here to War Memorial Stadium. Hand off to Jamal Johnson on second down and long, and he will be dropped immediately, but he had a face mask grab. Two flags come in, and that's going to be yardage for the Dragons. Trey Merritt stepping in to make the stop and getting a little bit of the hardware. Here's referee Scott Earlywine. There are two penalties on the play. Face mask on the defense. Holding on the offense. So the penalties are set. Second down. Wow. There you go. If you're four dice, you, uh, that, that's good that the uh, you have offsetting penalties and just replay the down because that could have been a big penalty off that face mask. Hey, continue the football conversation on social media with the hashtag AETN Sports. Second down and nine for Junction City. Handoff to Jackson. Jackson gets inside the 35-yard line to about the 32. Stop made by Joshua Harrington. I said Jackson, I'm sorry, Johnson. Jamal Johnson on the carry for the Dragons. Scott, you know, we were talking about the road to get here, and I threw out what Junction City did to get here. Fordyce, they beat Lavaca 42 to nothing. Magazine 38-14, Hazen 24-20, and Salem 38-14. Cook gets a good gain to the 31-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. But you would imagine they're going to go for it, of course. Yes. To that point, though, Scott, this is a team that, in the postseason so far, has been only allowing 12 points a game. So this defense has shown up all throughout the postseason and the regular season. Junction City, their defense, on the other hand, in the postseason has been giving up about 22 a game. Well, when both defenses are playing as well as they are and we're in a scoreless tie, the offense can't afford to stick with what got them here. Ja'Kyron Cook's going to take the direct snap. Off the right side, lowers his head, and he will be close, but I don't know that he got it. I don't think he did. We're going to have to get Eagle Eye Eric out there again to, to look at it, but uh, this one's going to be close. I, I think that... He may be about a half yard shy of the, the first down. There's Eric right on the spot. Down to Eagle Eye. That's, that's his new hey, name. Hey, look, he just runs in front of the coaches, gets <laughs> on the field. He, he the, is the all-powerful uh, sideline guy. <laughs> hey, Eagle Eye is over there. Let's go down to Eric real quick and find out. Uh, Eric, what do you see? If well, I just ran the 40 in about a 6-9, <laughs> as you probably noticed. Uh, we're getting a pretty good look at it here. I think he's going to be about a half yard short, and he is, guys. And uh, guys listening to the Fordyce coaches over here, maybe some nerves are a problem because they are saying, guys, too many mental mistakes on offense and defense. Settle down and play your game. Hey, next time, Eric, why don't you just offer to measure it for him? I mean, you're right uh, there. I mean, you walk all the way out to the 30-yard <laughs> line. Just <laughs> trying to catch my breath, guys. Give me a break, man. Where's the water at? Take the chains uh, out there for him, Eric. I love it. I love it. Eric, you know what? You won't find a guy that's going to hustle more for a, for a broadcast than Eric, and he does a great job. So Fordyce will take over, and we'll get a flag before the snap of the football. Probably a false start on the Red Bulls. Right snap. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Right 
Well, that has been the biggest Achilles heel for Fordyce's offense today as the penalty markers now starting to really mount up. Yeah, I, our, our stats monitor went down. I'm going to look up here momentarily to see exactly how many penalties there have been in the ball game. But, yeah, here in the second quarter, they have definitely added up more than what we saw in the first quarter. Brown throws out to the right side. It is caught at the 38-yard line by Jaquez Cross. He's going to be about a yard, yard and a half shy of the first down. But they get most of those 15 yards they needed, 13 on the play. Once again, another great throw by this quarterback. And, uh, you know, he hit, finds the guy that's wide open on the outside. And it was a low throw, but a great catch. And he just moves the football down the field. Three penalties, by the way, for Fordyce for 20 yards. No flags on Junction City so far. Clock rolling halfway through the second quarter. Jaheim Brown with a high snap, brings it down, but has nowhere to go. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage, maybe. Got back, and it's going to be third down and short. Scott, I don't know if they would have had a perfect snap if he would have had anywhere to run. I, the, the defensive line closed in and, and shot the gaps quickly on that one and didn't allow for any type of running game to happen. Be interesting to see if they don't get it here, if this is four down territory. You want positive yardage for sure. Brown's going to keep it himself. He's got the first down as it really opened up in the middle. And Fordyce moves the chains. Ja'Kyron Cook the stop for, for, for Junction City, a 13-yard gain. That is a great play call because you, if you're Junction City, you know that they're probably going to try to air it out. So they spread the field. and. That middle of the field opens up. You've got your three defensive linemen that are spread out and just a quarterback keeper. Look at that lane. Just goes left and back right and is able to pick up the first down. A great job, great play call. How about the moves by Brown yeah. there? He's got, yeah. he's got a little shake for a quarterback. Now he does have, as we told you, 77 carries coming into the game and 414 yards, 12 rushing touchdowns for the junior quarterback for Foy Rice. He's going to air it out on first down. A man is wide open at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Trey Hudson. He is out of bounds, actually, at the five-yard line. Run out there at the last second. Boy, he gave it a valiant effort. He he went and dove for the pylon, and just as he, he dove, he stepped out of bounds. And Either way, it's a great pitch and catch right here. Look at this throw. Just was able to air it out. Got separation, wide open man down the left-hand side. And right when yep. he went to go dive, he steps out of bounds. And now you, this is by far the best chance Fordyce has had to score all day. A 46-yard pass play. First and goal, the first time we've said that today. Handoff, Shelton, left side. Lowers his shoulder pads, and he's in for the Fordyce touchdown. Well, that was just hard-nosed physical football right there. Go left side with it and, and just drive into the end zone. Look, great hold, great offensive line. And then he takes on two Junction City Dragons to push them into the end zone for the touchdown. The We talked about the extra point situation in the kicking game. It, almost non-existent yeah and so you're going to see a lot of two-point conversions with this sport eyes team today they've only attempted five point afters all year long and they haven't made any they'll go out of the eye and they'll give it to sledge and sledge is in the two-point conversion is good and the red bugs strike first in the 2a state championship game a 71 yard drive a 46 yard pass play leading the way and they're up eight nothing here at war memorial stadium The best things about being a community-focused bank like Centennial is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief to chamber of commerce and civic activities, we enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. 
More information available at MyOneHundredBank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. As time passes and the years go by, change is something we all experience. But no matter how the world changes from year to year, the one thing that will never change is the true meaning of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Welcome back, everybody. Corte Shelton puts the Red Bugs on the board. It's 8 to nothing. Four dice over Junction City with just about five minutes to go. How about our friends here that are doing this broadcast, AET and Sports? Our cameraman, Eric, almost got ran over on that deep touchdown, or not the deep touchdown pass, but the deep pass. He was right on the ground working hard. So all of our AET and personnel and staff, thank you for what you do. We got people we know in Louisiana watching today online. Nebraska yesterday, Scott, somebody told me that. They were watching in Nebraska very much. Junction City takes over, finding themselves down for the first time. And, you know, RJ, you mentioned it early in the game. They were pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. Neither team getting a lot of success running the football. They were going to have to take their deep shot, and that's what got Fordyce in the end zone. That 46-yard play set it up. Yeah, and, you know, you, you were used to seeing a team just go inside, outside with the running game, and then Fordyce got a little bit more confidence. They saw the defense laxing off a little bit and were able to air it out, and Get that big pass play and then the eventual touchdown. A little option flip to Cook, and Cook turns the corner, flags out everywhere. Man, there are three of them on the field. This one's likely coming back. Enough laundry on the field to be at the laundromat. Hey, we would like to hear from you. Share your thoughts about AETN Sports and connect with us at AETN.org slash sports. On the offense, 10-yard penalty, spot a foul, first down. Didn't mean to step on the official there, but, uh, yeah, the uh, – uh, the, the holding penalty was set up on that outside, and uh, it was almost a pancake block on that outside. So uh, once again, Fordyce flying to the football, and Junction City just trying to find their way in that running game, whether they're working inside or outside. You know, their best success early was whenever they were running just straight up the gut. They were getting big play after big play uh, there early in the second quarter. That's the first penalty against the Dragons in this game. Johnson is the back with Hutchison, the quarterback. Brady Hutchison, and he's going to air it out. He had a man open. He underthrew his intended receiver, Harlandis Frazier. Frazier, if he'd have thrown it out there and let him run under it, I think that might have been six. Well, Sam Allen, though, kind of got lucky right here. Watch the replay because he was set up and really kind of looked last minute, and, oh, there's the football, and he knocks it away, and, a uh, great defensive play, but he didn't know where the football was until he just quickly turned around and, and saw it. This game really may come down to who hits the deep ball once or twice. Yeah. Hutchinson going to throw again. Looks like maybe the same play. And again, it's up for grabs, a 50-50 wow. ball, and Devontae Gilbert comes down with it at the 41-yard line. That's a great play. Caught it on his back as he was falling down. And that's still shy of the first down because they had so far to go because of the holding call. 18 yards on the pickup, but now it's third down and about four. Great concentration. He's laying on his back. Ball comes down. He's able to catch it and make a great play. Hand off Johnson. Boy, he's got a nice lane over the 45-yard line, and that's going to be a Junction City first down. Jaquaz Cross with the stop for Fordyce. Yeah. It's a pickup of seven yards. A great run right there. Comes off left side and was able to find the hole and pick up the first down and a little bit more. And, uh, you know, now they're getting a little bit of momentum. You're starting to see the football move a little bit, almost at that midfield spot. Hand off Johnson again behind his lead blocker. Cuts it up and gets about two. The Arius Sledge. Made the tackle. Sledge is an interesting story. You know, we always ask the coaches if they have any guys who have college offers. Sledge is going to play college baseball. Yeah. He plans to play baseball at Grambling. But he made the stop there from his linebacker spot for the Red Bugs. For as good of a football player as he is, we're told that he's even just as good, if not better, as a baseball player. He's left-handed, yeah. we're told. That, yeah. that always helps out. Second down and eight. Jamal Johnson is the back, the keeper by Hutchison. And Hutchison is stacked up and turned away. Trey Merritt 
right there to stacking up for Fordyce. That's a loss of one, and it's a third and long coming up under three and a half now to go until halftime. Hey, Scott, after the, this ball game, you and I are going to get to go down and visit with the uh, folks who brought food up from Corky's Ribs and Barbecue for all the catering they brought up. And we want to say special thank you to them. They have restaurant locations in Little Rock and North Little Rock. Third and eight. Hutchison directing traffic. Looks to throw back to Cook. He's got him. Ja'Kyron Cook breaks a tackle, breaks another. He's got the first down and is loose. Ja'Kyron Cook out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Joshua Harrington runs him out. That was all the playmaking ability of Ja'Kyron Cook. Credit the quarterback for finding him. That's a great job. Well, it was a design throwback play. You, you work the ball right side, throw it back left, and then it's just up to Ja'Kyron to make the play. He had to work around two different defenders to get open space, and then he was off to the races. 37 yards on the pass and the run by Ja'Kyron Cook. Yards after catch, big on that play. Hand off Johnson, tries to bounce it outside, and he is met immediately. First guy there was Caleb Jones, and the ball is loose, and Fordyce has it in the open field. No one to stop the Red Bugs. It is a Fordyce touchdown. No flags. Sam Allen returns it all the way to the house. God, I, I think you may, you may end up seeing a, a review as. Yeah, he just took yeah, it away no, from him. He threw it, just took it away from him. I, I think because everybody kind of stopped in that far side of the field, and sure enough that uh, he just ripped it right out of his hands and took it the length of the field. Wow. He sure did. He just took it right out of his hands and took it the length of the field. Now, the only question would be was forward progress stop, but that's not going to be something that's reviewable. No. That's going to be based on a whistle. So the official's call will stand, and I don't really think forward progress was stopped, quite frankly. He was being stacked up. Well, the way that everybody was standing, now we do. We may get a review. Yeah. No, there's a timeout. Well, there's a timeout Junction City, and that's why they want to call it. They want to maybe request it. Well, Brad Smith is, is waving for – his team to come over and, and they're pointing like for him to go look at the re the review but it's got you know you can't you can't review a whistle yeah uh, and the, you know i was looking down there and a lot of junction city and some four dice players had stopped had, had kind of stopped like there was a whistle blown or if uh, like so they had heard something except for one guy and he kept fighting to, to get that that turnover let's watch this replay right here you see there's all these guys over to the right side they're all just kind of standing around and and he just comes up and takes it away from him. That was Sam Allen who just ripped it right out and went for the touchdown. We go down, check in with Eric. I'm assuming that's why Junction City called this timeout, Eric, is for, the, for them to look at it. But I don't see them going to the headset. So I, I, it, this is going to stand. It's kind of a baffling play. Junction City, you got to think, guys, small school playing in a big stadium. I was right by the play. I did not hear a whistle blown. He was clearly up. This is going to be uh, six points for Fordyce. And what a heads-up play by Sam Allen. Could be. At the end of the day, that might win you the ball game the way these defenses are playing, but I did not hear a whistle, guys. 86 yards on the return. Well, they just changed on the screen. It's officially 88 yards. They, 88. Want, to, they want to make sure to give him his extra two <laughs> yards. He's not. He probably didn't get too many plays like that, Scott, so you want to make sure to give every yard he can. But, uh, yeah, just great job. That's You, know, you always hear coaches say you got to play to the whistle, and, and Sam Allen definitely, he just kept that fire going. Now the two-point conversion try, no good. Corti Shelton and not a, unable to find the goal line, so it will stay a 14-0 Fordyce lead here late in the half. Second turnover of the game forced by the Red Bugs, and, man, they have been good at that this year. Coming into this game, RJ, a plus 26 turnover yeah. margin. That's about as big as you'll see. Yeah, that, you don't see that very often, and, and uh, it's just – this defense, they, they, from the opening whistle till now, they, they have just continued to be really, really good. And, you know, we were talking with their coaching staff and some of their players on Monday. Tim Rogers said, hey, look, we've got a bad taste in our mouth after the way that they lost that game uh, at their place. It was raining, and uh, Jaheim Brown went all the way down to the Junction five-yard line, fumbled the football. They ended up losing the game uh, to Junction City. And so... They, they had something to prove in this game. That defense is showing out right now. Hey, get updates about the state finals on AETN right now on your phone. All you have to do is text AETN Sports to 31-31-31.
making their first state championship appearance since 1991. They went to back-to-back -back titles in 90 and 91. 12 and 2 on the year, Fordyce. They lost two of their last three in the regular season, but they have gone on a roll in the playoffs, and now they're rolling in the championship game. Sledge to kick off, and he kicks it straight in the air. And they're going to throw a flag down. Looks like it's going to be an offsides call on the kickoff team. Well, while we wait to assess that, though, we'll get the official call from the. I guess he's not going to say it, so I'll tell you. That, did you know that AETN offers the 24-7 PBS Kids channel both over the air and via the free PBS Kids app? PBS prepares young children for school and is the number one children's educational brand. Share PBS Kids with your kids that you love. Well, you remember we talked about it. With both teams in a scoreless match, you could afford to stay committed to the run and just take your shots occasionally. Now Junction City may be looking at this a little bit differently. There's not a quick strike ability for either of these offenses, really, even though they do score points against other teams. We'll see if the play calling is altered at all. They're still, I'm sure, going to be committed to the run, but Junction City now finds themselves in a 14-0 hole. Jackson, the up back, Johnson, rather, the up back, fields it for Junction City and brings it back to about the 43-yard line. That's a 10-yard kickoff return, so two and a half minutes, two timeouts, for Junction City. Remember, Fordyce won the toss and deferred their option. So they're going to get the football first in the third quarter. So this is a big series for the Dragons. Here's the thing. If you're the Dragons, you've got to score here. Right? If you want to have any momentum going into the second half, you need to run that clock as low as you can get it, but you've got to get the ball in the end zone on this drive. Going down 14-0 into the locker room, uh, there's a lot of things to correct, but it's a lot easier to correct if you've got a score on the board. Brady Hutchison is the quarterback. Ja'Kyron Cook is the running back, a 1,600-yard rusher on the year. Hutchison on the rollout, in trouble, throws it away. Boy, I, I tell you what, Scott, that time for Junction City, Devontae Gilbert, he was running wide open down the middle of the field. The play was rolling back towards the left side, but had Hutchison just looked up and, and planted his feet, he had Gilbert wide open in the middle of the field he could have hooked up with. Second and 10. Quick release, and it is incomplete again, intended for Harlandis Frazier. Really didn't have much chance to bring that in, and it actually went in and out of the hands of a Fordyce Redbug as well, and it's going to be third down. It's third down. A little pressure there from Sam Allen. He's the guy who return the 88-yard fumble. And one thing, Scott, right here, you don't want to go four and out in this situation and give Fordyce a great field position for them to be able to, to um, you know, have a great field position possibly score before the half. And it looks like we'll have a timeout. Charge to Fordyce. Yeah. Oh, it's Fordyce? Yep. Okay. Fordyce calls a timeout. It gives us a chance to remind you once again about the AETN halftime show. See how sixth and goal is impacting the lives of Arkansas middle schoolers. More about that organization. And Ed Leon, AETN's chief operating officer, has a great story about the Fordyce Redbugs. They call it the original, the state's original football program. That's coming up in two minutes and 21 seconds of the game clock. Scott, I, I know that uh, you do stuff with the Razorbacks and, and everything. You ought to take it just a drive. I know you're from Stuttgart originally. You ought to drive down to Fordyce one time or even Junction City, both two small towns. I've been able to have the luxury to go down and call games in both towns. And if you can go down and, and just – I love small-town Arkansas. Yeah. I, I love being able to go down and, and see these communities and, and see what a Friday night's like because both these communities love their football. They, they If you don't have plans or even if you do have plans – that plan is to be at the football stadium on a Friday night. Well, you forget in my former life, I used to fly a helicopter down to all those oh, places. Oh, that is right. I did forget been, about I've that. I've been to Fordyce a few times. Okay, yeah. I've Never made it to Junction City. I don't yeah. know that we can make it back by the 10 o'clock <laughs> news if we went way down there. Yeah. But we, we went to Fordyce a few times. And whistles and flags before the snap of the football <laughs> after the timeout. This may be a false start on Junction City. Car to the snap. 
Offsides on the offense. Yep. Five yard penalty, third down. You know, I, I forgot about the, the helicopter that you guys used to take around. Yeah. I bet that was pretty neat to, to fly into a place like Junction City and uh, do one of those football games. Neat yeah. and, and sometimes scary, depending on the pilot you had. Because <laughs> it's not like there are any helipads yeah, no. in Fort Ice or no. Ryzen or any of no. those places yet. If, if you ever knew if a helicopter could go in reverse, the answer is yes. <laughs> you can back it under power lines. Oh, that's great. It's third down and long after the penalty, and Cook will keep it on the ground, get back to the original line of scrimmage. So now it's going to be fourth down. We'll see if they want to punt it away. With the time on the clock, you would think maybe they'd think about kicking it away here. Well, you've got 30 seconds on the play clock, and that you know you you let it wind down to get it down to about a minute and a half. And you know, I, I would imagine they're going to try to run a play right here. Well, you give Fordyce a shorter field and still time on the clock if you go for it. I think he's lining up the punt, but they are going yeah. to they're going to think about it. Somebody is. Looks like Fordyce is going to call another timeout. Well, Let's go down to the field and check in with Eric. Yeah, Scott, uh, Coach Rogers going to get more points. That's why he's used up all his timeouts right here, kind of playing some tricks on uh, Junction City to see if they would go for it here to get the shorter field. But I think this uh, Fordyce team knows if they can get another score punched in here before halftime, they are in really, really good shape to win a 2A state championship, guys. If they do end up punting it away, it'll be the fourth three and out for the Junction City offense in this first half. Yeah, and you know, I said run a play, I meant punt it, but you know, you look at it, Scott, a minute 46 left here in the first half, and the way that Fordyce has been throwing the football, that's plenty of time. Now, if you if you were strictly going to say they've got, they're going to try to run the football into the end zone, it might be a little bit more tough, but uh, the way that Fordyce has thrown it so far, you look at so far, they've thrown for 77 yards. They lead in the passing category with Junction City, and uh, you give them a short field, that could set up for a, a possible third score before the half for Fordyce. Hutchison will try to get a good punt away, and it's a pretty decent punt. Spins, takes a hop at the 20. It's fielded by Cross, and Cross has nowhere to go. So it'll be interesting to see how Fordyce plays it because they're out of timeouts now. They just burned their final timeout. I don't think they're going to want to make a mistake here. I'd be surprised if they're going to try to air it out and go into a two-minute offense here deep in their own end with no timeouts in a minute 34. But you don't want to give the football back no. to Junction City either. Yeah, and Junction City's done a really good job of stopping their running game. And I would imagine you'd play it a little conservative, but just not lock it down. You're going to air it out a little bit. You've got, I mean, a minute 34, probably working back towards the sidelines to, to conserve some clock. The ball's on the near hash, so you'll you'll have the Junction City side of the field to to, to be able to work with that sideline. So I, I would imagine this first one, you'll probably see a run, and then they air it out on second and third down. Shelton off the offset eye will get the handoff, and, he gets nothing. Let's see if Junction City calls a timeout. Don't believe they're going to. I think we're about to head to halftime. They have two. I'm just, I, I'm kind of surprised Fordyce doesn't try to do a little swing pass on the outside in the flats or something just to, to get a little bit of separation. They've got playmakers to try to make something in the open field, but if Junction City's not going to call a timeout and they're both content, then I get it. Take a 14-0 lead to the halftime. They may have to snap it twice more. Here's one of them in the flip into the backfield to Hudson. Trey Hudson gets a couple. And now there is going to be a timeout called by Junction City. So with 45 seconds, they were hanging on to those two because now if they get a stop, they'll have a chance to get the football back with a little bit of time on the clock. Yeah, so you go third down, and I mean, Scott, I, the, we've seen the kicking game for Fordyce. It's the greatest in the world, he, yeah. hunting or yeah. kickoffs. That's why I say, why don't you try to air it out right here, or even on second down, try to air it out, get some yardage out of the deal, because your kicking game is really not the greatest. And off, off the last two punts that Fordyce has had, the last punt was a yard and a half punt. Yeah. So that's not going to help you out a whole lot right here. I think here on third and long, you do see a pass because if you don't get the first down, because Junction City is going to commit their final timeout, you're going to have to give them the football back yeah. anyway. So you're not really worried about the clock stopping if you throw it incomplete here. And you, I think the priority here for Fordyce is you got to get the first down. So you may see them throw the football. There's our guy. What was his name? 
I forgot already. <laughs> I had to ask you. I had to ask you. Yeah, he the, guy, the guy getting the uh, signature was it on the blank. Was it Pookie? Poochie or? I don't remember what his name is. Poochie. Poochie, Poochie, Poochie we're told. There we go. Super Poochie. He has a guy, he's got a cape on. Yes. It doesn't look like they're going to line up to throw it here. They do keep it on the ground. Here's Hudson again. Hudson, though. Oh, it loses his footing. He still may have enough for the first down. Looked like it was a guaranteed first down. It is still going to be a nine-yard run by Trey Hudson to move the chains, and now Fordyce can run out the clock. Boy, if, he, if he's able to keep his, his footing, he may have a lot of yards. Hey, he was he had a great lane on that right side and just able to, wasn't able to keep his feet. Got the turf monster after him. So the Red Bugs will have to snap it one more time. Ten-second difference between the play clock and the game clock. It was a scoreless game heading into the second quarter. An offensive touchdown and a defensive touchdown as Fordyce on top, 14-0 as we head to the break here at War Memorial Stadium. Tim Rogers will be making his way towards the locker room, and Eric Sullivan is there to catch him when he does to get a word from the coach who has his team up by two scores at the break. But that defensive touchdown, really the momentum swing that Fordyce got heading into halftime, and they'll get the football first here in the third quarter. Yeah, that, that, that was a big momentum shift for this Fordyce team. Gave them a lot of confidence moving forward, especially into the second half. And, uh, I'll be interested to see what kind of adjustments Junction City comes out with here in the second half as they take a four, or as Fordyce takes a 14-0 lead at the half. Eric has caught up with Coach Tim Rogers. Let's go check in with him on the sidelines. Coach Rogers, Fordyce, you guys got a 14-0 lead, a big play on offense, a big time play on defense. You got to like where you're at right now against uh, the Junction City Dragons. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, we got to finish the ball game. That's what we talked about last time we played them. We did this too and uh, we just got to make sure we finish and we got to cut down on penalties we've had I don't know how many penalties we're going to go find out at halftime all right uh, this is a dangerous Junction City team but you've got to be proud of your defense so far yes uh, things that we worked on we've done and I'm very proud of them uh, we just got to we just got to keep doing it for 24 more minutes coach good luck in the second half yes sir thank you very much all right uh, Scott uh, Scott and RJ back to you guys see you in the third quarter all right, thanks very much, Eric. And back to that defensive touchdown, just a reminder how long it was, 88 yards, meaning Junction City was knocking on the door of tying the football game. So, again, testament to that big, big momentum swing that has Coach Rogers and the Red Bugs up 14-0 at the half. We'll take a break and return to War Memorial Stadium in just a moment. You're watching the high school state championships on AETN Sports. phone and just be in the moment. You guys ready? Yeah! <laughs> it's a thrill to see images of a new world for the first time. I want to look back and say, I learned something. That is where transformation happens. If you're asking me. I see people cry on this show, and I'm like, what y'all doing, man? <laughs> I don't just feel it. Out of the water came this giant thing. That's incredible. I feel it in my bones. This is so total amazing. I feel it in my bones. And I know the constant. They hear that song and they're like, that's my story. I feel it in my bones. I have chills. I feel it in my bones. All of the joys, all of the sorrow. This is where it comes from. The rest is history. Feel it in my bones. It's halftime in the 2A state championship game here at War Memorial Stadium, and Fordyce has a 14-0 lead on the Junction City Dragons. Junction City defeated them 14-12 in the regular season, late in the regular season. In fact, Fordyce lost two out of their last three in the regular season. So they were kind of limping into the playoffs, yeah. but some of that probably had to do with the competition they were playing. But they've learned some things. You heard Coach Rogers allude to it when Eric asked him about his defense. He said, hey, they're doing the things we taught them to do. They were prepared for this team. They know them well, and they've put a real stop on Junction City, a team that gets 47 points per game, has 158 yards of total offense and no points. And really, it's been a great defensive game for both teams. I mean, both teams have played a really good defense, defensive game. It's just been a break or two for Fordyce that's got them in this thing. Really, if you think about it, this should be a seven-point game. If you don't have that 
just weird, pull the ball out, run at 88 yards. It's a seven-point game. Credit their defense for that happening, but really, uh, if you're Junction City, you don't really have to change a whole lot. you got to find some ways to get the offense moving, the yeah. running game moving a little bit better. But defensively, keep doing what you're doing because they have shut down Fordyce throughout this entire game minus yeah. a pass play and a, and a defensive score. You know, it's a great point because if you look at the rushing yardage, and we'll do the stats when we come back later, so we're not going to go over all the stats, but they have run for 102 yards. Yeah. So Junction City has been more effective on the ground. Fordyce has been held to 38 but they've done a better job going to the second dimension of their offense. The passing game in lieu of the running game has gotten it done for the Red Bucks. Well, and when you talk to the coaching staff for Fordyce, uh, J Jaheim Brown, he was a guy all season long that could throw it and pass it when needed. They would rather stick with the run in a ball game, but if when Brown's been called on to throw the ball, he's got a big arm. He's shown that so far in this game, and uh, he makes great decisions. It, whenever, when he's looking downfield, he's got three targets to go with. He's always found the right one so far. Well, we didn't see a mercy rule coming in the second half last night. No. I, I don't think we're going to see one tonight, but we were wrong last night, so uh -huh. we'll see. The second half still about 15, 20 minutes away here at War Memorial Stadium. It's a 14-0 lead for the Red Bugs over the Junction City Dragons. Stay tuned. The AETN Halftime Show is next with Ed Leon, AETN's Chief Operating Officer. We'll be back to the stadium in a little while. Hi, Roger Scott for Big Red Stores. Big Red Stores is proud to support high school athletics and to sponsor these high school championship games. Over 40 Big Red Stores are located throughout Central Arkansas, each one staffed with our team members who have participated in games, marched in the band, or led the spirit teams in cheers. And now we are pleased to bring families, schools, and communities together. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Enjoy the games. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by The Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. Hey, welcome inside to Halftime at AETN Studios. I'm your host, Ed Leon. We're hoping that you're enjoying our broadcast of the state football finals from War Memorial Stadium. We've got a packed show for you here at halftime, including a story about a legendary Arkansas high school football program and a story about little legends in the making. All right, tucked away in the pines of south central Arkansas is a small town of Fordyce. Infamous for arresting and detaining the Rolling Stones in 1975, Fordyce is also a place of deep football tradition. It's home to the very first high school football program in Arkansas, the championship legacy of native son Paul Bear Bryant, and the only place in America you'll find their proud mascot, the Redbugs. Friday night in Fort Ice is electric. Friday in Fort Ice is, is uh, special. To me, football in Fort Ice means a way of life. Magical. You can't even explain it. As a kid, I remember you could hear the drums beating, you could hear the band, you could actually hear the cheerleaders cheering, and we would all be walking to the game, and once we heard that, we start running in that direction and get to the game before the kickoff. Fordyce Red Bucks get set to do battle with the Hampton Bulldogs here in Fordyce on a historic Paul Bear Bryant field here on 98.9 FM, KBJT AM 1590. All tails going to hit the ground, guys. It's a really, really rich tradition here. It is so the program started back in 1904. A lot of people don't realize that. Fordyce football started in 1904 at the Clary Training Academy 
1906, we played our first uh, game with El Dorado uh, here at home. Of course, Fordyce won that game. Coming through the early 1900s, you get to you know the late 20s, early 30s, and we, we get to a guy named Paul Bear Bryant, and you know the rest is history from there. So Bear Bryant, of course, he he played his football at Fordyce. Been in a town where you know Paul Bear Bryant played football at, and he was the win is the winningest coach in NCAA history for college football. That make you feel pretty special. Then we watched guys play in a Super Bowl more than once that wore that Red Bug jersey. You know, that coaching tree was really, really fruitful in regards to the coaches this town produced. There's a lot of really impressive coaches that's come out of this town. Coach Parker, Coach Lacey. Another strike down the left side, has a man there, number one, Trey Hutchins, catches on the sideline. Trying to roll the ball with About 30 years. My first game was the uh, first game of the 1990 season, and I've just missed three in 30 years. It's always good for a Friday night. Everybody look forward to Friday night. The guys get off work, and man, they only have one thing on their mind. Go home, take a shower, get ready to watch those red books. That, that to me, that's just small town football. I know there may be other places that have bigger crowds, but when you come to our place with our stadiums and the way that we are, I mean, you're right there on the field. You get to be, you're part of the ball game and you can hear and see everything. Hey, we need to get the ball back. During the game downtown, I think it's empty. I think everybody's at the football game on Friday night. Matter of fact, we have to make sure we got a policeman to patrol the neighborhoods because if you want to rob anybody, you can rob them on Friday night in Fort Ayers because nobody's going to be home. Everybody be at the football field. <laughs> yeah, somebody get the house broken into. <laughs> After you add a story, it'll be on me. <laughs> The only red bug in the country. Fort Ice red bugs, the story is that when they were clearing the football field, that uh, they got infested with chiggers. Well, I tell you, we're the only red bug in the nation. When I ordered my class ring, i never forget they was telling us, man, there's a lot of tigers and a lot of bears, but man, they had to specially make a red bug. The red bug mascot itself kind of tells the whole story. A red bug is a small little arachnid that you cannot see with the naked eye. He's so small but you let him bite you and you have been inflicted a wound. Football is just a way of life here in, in this town and community and, and it's gonna continue being that way. You know, it's not just it's not just us coming through now. We're having a really successful year, but this started long ago. You know, we're just a part of a, a very special tradition. Quarterback draw here, he's off and running. The Red Bugs, an Arkansas football tradition. Hey, I want to take this opportunity to tell you how you can join the AETN Sports Booster Club to support these broadcasts of not only football, but basketball, baseball, and softball. Um, we have two membership uh, levels for you to contribute to our broadcast. The first one's called the Rookie Level, and you get uh, a, one of these thank you gifts for $35, uh, as well as the AETN magazine that keeps you looped in. And we also have the All-Star membership, and for $60, the All-Star membership also gets you Passport, which is AETN's uh, streaming service that allows you to uh, watch all your favorites on demand anytime you want. So here's how you join. $35 for Rookie, $60 for All-Star. You call 1-800-662-2386, or you join online at aetn.org slash sports. All right. Sports, you know, can teach valuable life lessons and focus the lives of young people. And now, thanks to a partnership between community volunteers and some Arkansas public schools, middle schoolers who otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity get the experience, the benefits of mentorship, teamwork, and the feeling of achievement that comes from a program called Sixth and Goal. be on this Sunday afternoon if they were not here with, with their coach getting them mentally ready. Let's get fired up! Let's get fired up! Let's get fired up! 
the vision mission uh, of the Six to Go program is to, is to retain students through mentorship and through involvement, extracurricular activities. There's research over and over and over, through and through, that shows that when kids are involved in extracurricular activities, they retain better, they graduate, they do all those things. So the studies indicate that by having this program, uh, we will be able to improve graduation rates and keep kids in school. Athletics is, to me, is interrelated with academics. The two go together. The more kids that we get participating in athletics, the more that we can keep our hands on on, 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 on a daily basis and keep those kids moving in the right direction. Our whole team, like, they got tired of losing. We've had people quit before, but we've gained people. It's like a miracle because we lost a person and we gained one, and then we ended up making it to the championship because uh, we practiced enough and it worked. It teaches responsibility, it's sportsmanship, um, teaches them drive and passion for the game that can follow them for the rest of their life. He learned how to, you know, deal with his anger when he's on the field. And that's the best thing about it. And it, I think it make his, makes him happy because, you know, everybody's like, let's go, Kavon, you know, let's go, Henderson. They like to see, you know, I guess get the extra love. The beauty of this is that middle school is a critical age, and so having that extra level of support uh, is, is critical, and whether that's with our football or our volleyball, we're about ready to start wrestling, all those things are going to have a positive impact. Most of the people you'll see here today are non-paid volunteers, and they come out to put uh, our kids first and to let our kids know that we care about them, we love them, uh, we want to steer them, we want to feed them, we want to transport them, we want to take down every barrier that may, they may have in the inner city youth so that we can get them involved somehow, some way, and keep them involved in athletics don't know what they're going home to many times. We need to be that light in their life that can say, hey, I can do this, I can be this. And football is one sport that taught me that, and I want to make sure they get the opportunity to do that as well. Hey, a big thanks to all the volunteers, teachers, and parents who make that program possible. And thank you for joining us on the Halftime Show here at AETN, your home for the Arkansas State Football Finals. I'm Ed Leon. Let's send you back out to War Memorial Stadium for the second half. Great halftime show as we welcome you back to War Memorial Stadium. The Red Bugs of Fordyce on top 14-0 over the Junction City Dragons, the defending 2A state champions. Hey, as we have done on every football broadcast this year, we are honoring our 2019 Scholar Athletes. And we'll start with the one from Fordyce. It is wide receiver and linebacker Darius Sledge. He plans to study engineering and has a GPA of 3.8, and our scholar athlete from Junction City is the quarterback for the Dragons, Brady Hutchison. He plans to study architecture in college and has a 3.9 GPA. Congratulations to Darius and Brady for being our 2019 scholar athletes for the 2A state championship game. Taking a look at some of the numbers from the first half, we talked about some of them on the front end of the halftime show the passing yards and the total yards in favor, or I should say the total yards in favor of Junction City and the rushing yards in favor of Junction City. They've ran the football pretty well, pretty effectively. It's really been the turnovers that have made the difference. We saw that be the case in last night's 4A game with Robinson running away in the second half with a victory over Shiloh Christian, and it rings true again today. RJ, three turnovers, really the difference in the ball game, and then going back to what we talked about a moment ago, Fordyce being stuffed in the run game, but being able to connect in the deep ball in the passing game. Well, you know, you look at those three turnovers, and one of them was for a touchdown. And so that that's a that's the difference in a seven-point game and a 14-point game right there. And, uh, you know, a lot of momentum riding with Fordyce going into the locker room right now. If you're Junction City, you got to come out and say, how do we do better? What do we got to do offensively to be able to move the ball in this defense? And what do we got to do when we get into the red zone to be able to put the ball in the end zone? So, uh I really think that 
it's a 14 to nothing game, but this is not an insurmountable lead for Fordyce for Junction City to come back. Gene Brown was 6 out of 10 for 77 yards in the first half. As we take a look at some of the first half highlights, Brady Hutchison was 4 out of 9 for 56 yards, but it was a nothing-nothing game going into the second quarter thanks to Again, turnovers and great defense. Yeah, and then you saw that's how you started up with an interception. And then look at this fumble. Just pulls it out and got a fumble right there. That was the second turnover. Yep. Now here's the big pass play that went down the right side. That was the first touchdown of the ball game. Well, actually, we thought it was a touchdown, but they, they were able to take it in from four yards out. There's the first score of the ball game right there. And then and then when you look at the, the defense, they pull it out right here, take it for a touchdown, and you got a 14-0 lead. And I believe Eric's downstairs right now with yep. uh, the Junction City coach. All right, Coach Smith, uh, two big plays by Fordyce there on offense and defense. How do you kind of overcome that and get your guys and get, get some points on the board? You need that battle here in the first part of the second it's half. It's a play-to-play -play game. you got to play each play like it's last. And, uh, like, you're right. I mean, most games are inside. Most close games are inside like that. A couple of big plays here and there. Um, we don't hold on to it one time. We jumping out when we should have stayed back. You know, I um, mean, that's football. Um, we, got, we got 24 minutes to get it back, so. How big is it you guys played before? Kind of the same situation they got on you early. You're able to come back. You got to have your team has to have some confidence. They can't get this game right. Oh, yeah. I mean, all we got to do is hold on to football. We've had it down here twice and, and dropped it twice. Once, once was six for them. So, if we just hold on to football, we feel like we'd be up. So, you know. It's right. just a game. They got to go. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Okay. All right, RJ, Scott, back up to you guys. All right. Thanks very much, Eric. Yeah, the defense he has to be pretty pleased with. He has to be pleased with being able to move the football with the run game. And I think they're going to stay committed to that. There's yeah. still, I mean, there's no time to, no reason to panic down 14 nothing. Brad Smith is a heck of a defensive coach. Yeah. And he's a guy that uh, he's had his team prepared outside of really, out of, outside of a defensive play and a long pass play. That's the difference in the ball game in this one. They, Junction City has played an outstanding defensive game outside of you know a couple big pass plays, and I expect that defensive intensity to 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 start the third quarter. It's going to be right there, and uh, you're going to see much like what you saw in the first quarter here in the third quarter. Teams kind of feeling themselves out out after the locker room, and then uh, the fourth quarter ought to be fun. Kyron Cook has 69 yards on just 15 carries. That's 4.6 per carry. You'll take yeah. that all day. And I, I do think as I, I'm looking down the stat page, I'm thinking about their playmakers too. you got Frazier, Cook, and Gilbert with only four catches combined. And Cook has uh, done a good job running the football. But I, I think you got to really feel like if, if you're Junction City, you got to get those guys in space in the second half. There hasn't been much space. Fordyce has closed well, and they've tackled well. Well, and, and you got to think of what Junction City's done in this game. They've stuck to their game plan. They've run the football, and they, they've stayed to that true to form throughout the first half. You've got to find ways to, to move the football outside of just the running game because right now Fordyce is keyed on this all week long. They know what you're going to come at them with. They've already, you've already faced them once. You've got a history there. So you, whether it's a trick play, whether it's opening up the passing game a little bit more, you've got to get away from just a little bit, not not destroy the game plan altogether, but you've got to open the things up a little bit more to be able to get in the end zone. A reminder, the second half of our doubleheader coming up later on AETN, a 6.30 kickoff. Actually, to be technical, 6.35 is the kickoff time in the 3A state championship game. Harding Academy is back in the state finals after a little bit of a hiatus, and they will be taking on Osceola, the Seminoles, who were here just a year ago. Uh, they lost last year to Boonville, and they are hungry to get back and have a chance to win a state championship. You know, it's amazing when you look at all of, of all the teams involved in the state titles that eight of them were actually here a year ago, yeah. Junction City being one of them. They won the 2A a year ago over Hazen, beat them in that 2A championship game. You know, talking, I know that the Osceola game is later on today, but we were talking with their head coach earlier this week, and he, he said yeah. they had a bad taste in their mouth from that Boonville game, called them the uh, the mammal, what was it, the the manimals, manimals, yeah. manimals. He said those are the biggest kids he's ever seen at, high, at the high school level. <laughs> and so uh, it would be interesting to see Osceola and uh, Harding Academy in the, the next game coming up. But we've got to finish out a half of this one because, uh, you know, we, the size factor in this one, you, we, we, you always think about 2A football and think it's the lowest classification, but, well, there are some athletes at both these schools. And, you know, one thing that both coaches talk about is that these kids, whereas if you're at the 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 7, 8 level, you've got kids, some only play defense, some only play offense. For these two schools, you've got kids playing both ways. They're on the field the entire game playing a football game. 
As we mentioned earlier, Fordyce will get the ball first after winning the coin toss and deferring their option to the second half. Three combined losses between these two teams. Junction City 11-1 on the season. Fordyce 12-2. One of their losses to Junction City. The other to McGee. They lost two of their final three games of the regular season but went on a roll in the playoffs. And Junction City's only loss was in the season opener to Camden Harmony Grove 30-26. to So they've rolled off an 11-game winning streak since losing their first game. Gabe Richard to kick off for the Dragons, and he'll angle it towards the sidelines. And a fair catch made by Caleb Jones, and the Red Bugs will start at about their own 34-yard line. Well, pretty good field position to start the second half for Fordyce, and I would imagine they're going to hammer the run game early in this, this first series, try to find some space, pick where they're going to go, and then, uh, like we talked about, they're going to feel each other out coming out of the locker room on this first drive, and uh, you're going to see a lot of off-tackle runs from this Fordyce Redbug team. I don't know if the Fordyce crowd has spread out since halftime or there are more people here, but it, it looks like there are more people in the stands across the way. Yeah. 4,000, about 4,000. That's the population of Fordyce, and most of them, if not all of them, are here cheering on their Redbugs in their, Red Bugs in their first state title appearance since 1991. Quick pass to Shelton out of the backfield, and Corti Shelton wrestled down shy of the line of scrimmage. Devontae Gilbert makes the stop, a tackle for loss of one. He's trying to swing it out wide to, to, to get it outside the, that defensive line. That defensive line for Junction City is so good, and they're big. And so they're just trying to work it outside to get some space, but the secondary stepped up. The corners worked their way in, got off of a block, and were able to make the tackle. Well, you can't really emphasize enough how big this possession is. If you go up three scores, it's going to be very difficult for Junction City. Big stop is what they need. Over the middle. Boy, what a strike. Caught by Jones, and Caleb Jones reverses his field, and he's into plus territory down to the Junction City 43-yard line, the stop made by Ja'Kyron Cook. Boy, Scott, what, was I wrong or what? I said they'd come out here running the ball and, <laughs> and feeling each other out, and they're, they're out here like a spread team slinging around the football field. Well, when you can throw it like that, I mean, Brown was on target to Caleb Jones. The 5'9 senior hauls it in. It's a big game, 25 yards, and Fordyce is on the move. Nothing wrong with using a little clock time here, huh? Play clock is down to five as they line up and get set. Hand off Shelton. Shelton hit in the backfield again. Tate Barnett makes the stop. How many times have we said that, that a defender, they don't always make the stop in the backfield, but it feels like every handoff there is a defender making contact in the backfield with the running back. Yeah, they've read their keys really well. And and it's that defensive line. They, they are getting a great push on the run game, and, and they're able to push up field and get in the backfield to make the tackle. So it's now a second down and 12 for Fordyce with 10-17 to play. Hey, support Arkansas Public Media. Visit AETN.org to learn more about our local programming and community events. That was Kyle Kidwell on the stop. Check out that replay, the defensive tackle, a senior. Second down and 12. Moving the pocket, Hutchison under pressure, loses the football, and it is recovered by Junction City. Just what the doctor ordered for the Dragons. Well, Scott, that, that's a, a guy trying to make a play, and it's an ill-advised play. Just go down, take the sack, and, and live for another day. And, uh, you know, a great job. You, you had three Junction City Dragons in there to, to, to make the sack, and that time, though, if you're, if you're any quarterback, you got to make a play and, and just – the play that time is go down, take the sack, and, and, and live. you got to tuck that thing in. and Look at him. You see right there, he's just trying to get it out of there and, and get an incomplete pass or something to get back to the line of scrimmage. And so that's the first turnover for Fordyce here in the ballgame. Tanner Barnett knocked it loose. Cam Torrance with the recovery for Junction City, and they'll start at the Fordyce 46-yard line. Pistol formation. Cook is the running back, and again, it looks like a busted play as Hutchison 
will keep it himself and cross the 45-yard line, but not much else there. You know, that's happened so often, I kind of wondered if it was part of the play call, but he turns sometimes and nobody's even there. Well, sometimes he turns back and goes to the other side. Well, Ja'Kyron Cook looked to the sideline and kind of tapped himself yeah. and said, yeah. hey, that was on me because, you know, when your quarterback goes left, you're, you're expecting the running back to be there, and Ja'Kyron just went to the opposite side. Cook still in the ball game at running back. That's Frazier in motion. Hutchison sets up. Downfield, incomplete, knocked away. A good defensive play for Fordyce. Boy, Scott, it, it was intended for Barnett. Yeah, and if he just waits just a moment longer, he had time in the pocket. If he waits a moment longer, he's got Devontae Gilbert streaking down the left sideline. Yeah. That he was wide open. You just got to hold that ball for just a minute longer, let him get past the, the secondary, and he's off to the races. You've got a touchdown. Third down and nine. Junction City trying to capitalize on a big turnover. Handoff Cook. And Cook works his way down to the 40-yard line. Stop made by Diarius Sledge after a five-yard pickup. Here comes a big fourth down. The Dragons one out of three on fourth down this afternoon. Hutchison throws up the near sidelines. His receiver forced out of bounds. He makes a great catch, but he was out of bounds and came back in, Devontae Gilbert. But there's no indication the officials caught it. They're saying he got it, and it's a first down. 18-yard gain. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was forced out probably, but yeah. usually there's still a hat that drops there. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was clearly pushed a half yard out of bounds. And now they're going to stop it now. Now they're going to say timeout. Oh, timeout, time Fort Ice. Well, Junction City keeps the drive alive after the turnover on the first possession of the third quarter. And if you look across the field right now, Scott, um, Coach Tim Rogers walked all the way out to the hash marks to talk to the White Hat about that. He's wanting to know why is there not a review of, of that. Guy went out of bounds and came back in to catch it. He's, he's asking for an explanation. While he gets that expl explanation, I want to tell you that new for 2020 ATM Sports brings you the high school baseball and softball state finals in May. Get the latest updates by signing up for alerts at aetn.org backslash sports. Well, yeah, I'll tell you on the replay, we're, we're, we're checking to see that he did indeed go out of bounds, which it was obvious that he did. But give Gilbert a lot of credit on that catch. That was a heck of a grab, too. Yeah, it was great. I mean, it's a possession play. Yeah. He worked his way out of bounds, comes back in, makes a catch, and uh, it was a great job. And I don't, I don't think the uh, – No, they're not. Yeah, they're not. The DV Sports guy walked out to the 20-yard line, and I don't think they're going to have a replay of this. I'm not sure I don't have the list in front of me if that is a reviewable. Well, it's a possession. It's a possession. So well, they, it wouldn't be a – yeah, okay. Because, so they, they review on scores, possessions, ejections, uh, and then in the uh, under two minutes, or if it's a coach's challenge, that's a, that's what they're going to review on, and uh, so that would be considered possession. But um, either way, uh, going back to back to uh, gameplay. So it's a first down for the Dragons. I guess that it, the possession meaning turnover. There was no turnover on the play, so. or maybe a, yeah, or yeah. catch. Yeah, catch or no catch. But either way, we're back to work. Hand off Cook. Cook has a good hole to run through and a good first down run. Stop made by Darius Sledge. Let's go to the sidelines and check in with Eric. All right, guys, uh, clearly out of bounds. In fact, I was right by the young man. He had both feet out, came back in, but uh, big break from Junction City. And, you know, when you talk about Coach Brad Smith, think about this, Scott and RJ. Uh, 1981, he was on the state baseball championship team with Junction City, and every Ten all ten state championship. Coach Smith, in some capacity, has been on the Junction City staff. So uh, you saw him pretty calm in our halftime interview about his guys getting back in this game, and uh, that just uh, bleeds over to his team, oozes over. They can get back in this thing, especially if they can get a, uh, get a six right here, maybe an eight with the two point conversion. You know, to that point, he he was talking to us on Monday about you know his relationship with David Carpenter, the longtime legendary 
uh, football coach down at Junction City and, and really uh, kind of got cut his teeth under Coach Carpenter. And Coach Carpenter's yep. still uh, on the administration down at Junction City, City. So it's nice to see a guy like Brad Smith that has been able to stay, stay in with the program and just help continue to lead this football team. You see the injured Fordyce Redbug Hagen Sullivan being helped to his feet. Yeah, Co Coach Smith is just an old ball coach. I mean, you, you yeah. can you know, talk about Eric saying he's staying calm there at halftime. He he's very matter of fact with everything he says. You know, that's what I picked up from. We interview all the coaches, we get them in one after yeah. another, so you get to really compare the personalities. He's he's very hey, it, it, this ain't hard. You just gotta you just gotta go out there and do it. The best the best line that we ask we always ask these guys for stats and things like that, and he says. I don't have any stats. Yeah, that's right. What do you mean don't have stats? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, this is a team game, not an individual game. I don't care about stats. And I was like, well, that's – and he was mainly talking about defensive stats when he was talking about that. But uh, uh, you just don't hear that very often no. this day and age. And our, our thanks, by the way, to the uh, Dragon Sports Network because they do keep stats. Yes. They, they have a whole crew down there uh, doing, I guess, a live stream for this uh, broadcast or, or maybe it's on tape delay, but they are doing the – Coverage of the Dragons all season long. Hand off to Cook on second down, and Cook gets close to the first down. He will probably have it. Looks like he's marked down right at the 12-yard line. Stop made by Sledge again, and he's putting in some good work for the Fordyce Redbugs in his linebacker spot. You know, one number that kind of sticks out to me, Scott, is that you look, and, and so far in the game, Junction City's run for 118 yards. They passed for 74, but... Fordyce has only run for 27 yards in this game. Timeout for a measurement. I thought they he had it, but they are going to take a look at it and see. Let's see if uh, Eric's right there. Yeah, he's right there again. Right. Eagle he's eye, always Eric. on top of it. What do you say, Eric? Kind of calling first down. And on Hagen Sullivan, guys, uh, I didn't get quite get. Oh, he's going to be about an inch short. I'm over for uh, one for one today. But uh, Sullivan, real ginger on his right leg. I'm going to walk over there and see if I can get more information. His teammates, of course, helping him out. But it will be fourth down, guys. All right. Thank you, Eric. Sullivan, a 5'10", 165 senior defensive tackle for Fordyce. Third down and a few inches. Hutchison keeps it himself, and he is stood up and turned back by Joshua Harrington. Loss of three. There's a good article in the paper talking about the defense for Fordyce, and it, they highlighted Joshua Harrington, and, and he came in, came in from his outside linebacker, or inside linebacker position and just blew up that hole and stopped the play. And now instead of third and a couple of inches, it's fourth down and three. This is a big down, Scott. I, I, momentum wise for Junction City, they they really need this. Whether they score or not, they need to get the first down to continue this drive. Being down 14 nothing, 7 15 and counting here in the third. Possessions are going to start becoming a factor. Flip to Cook, and Cook hit at the line of scrimmage. He breaks a tackle and gets very close. From here, I think he got it, but it's going to depend on the spot, and he may not get a really good one. Well, Eric's over there at the, the marker on that far side, and I think he may be just a touch short. It's Fordyce's football. Yeah. Hey, join AETN this January with, with a new Saturday Night Mystery lineup. It starts at 8 p.m. with two episodes of Midsummer Murders, followed by Shakespeare and Hathaway and Frankie Drake Mysteries. Sign up for updates at AETN.org. The Red Bugs a chance to possibly put it out of reach if they can go down the field here and burn a little bit of this third quarter clock and go up three scores. They will keep it on the ground with Shelton. Shelton breaks the 15-yard line, and he's going to be good for about four on first down. The tackle made by Ja'Kyron <laughs> Cook. Said his name an awful lot on both sides of the football for Junction City. Obviously, their lead running back, and the six-foot senior plays free safety. Came in with 78 tackles on the year, second leading tackler on the team.
Hand off to Shelton again. Shelton stays on his feet past the 20. He's going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down. It's a gain of four. The third down and two coming up. And the clock will drift under six minutes with that play. Scott, you know how we were, we've were we been telling folks throughout the broadcast to join the conversation at ATN.com backslash sports or hashtag. So they're doing it? Well, yes, and the uh, fan favorite so far in the in the uh, broadcast is Pucci for Fordyce. Oh, so okay. Over on that far side, he's getting a lot of talk. In fact, uh, ah. a box site coach, Paul Cowley, sent me a text that said, uh, we need more Pucci on the broadcast. <laughs> well, there's our directive. The pitch to Shelton, and Shelton is shy of the first down. So Fordyce likely going to punt it away this deep in their own end. Cook is again there for the stop. He's been everywhere. Well, we'll see here if they punt it away. I would expect them to deep on their own end. Here comes the unit. But this will get the clock under five minutes. And the, and the clock is, you know, you think 14 nothing, but the way this game's being played, that's a big lead in yeah. this game. Yeah, I mean, like I said just a minute ago, though, possessions are going to start becoming a factor because you've got five minutes left in this game, and there's been three possessions so far. You, yep. you've, Fordyce has had it twice, and Junction City's had it once, and we're almost done with the third quarter. Frazier awaiting the punt. This is a good one. A booming punt. Best of the day. Frazier backpedaling and will not be able to break free. Good flip of the field that time for Fordyce on the punt team. And that puts Junction City at their own 36-yard line to start. 45-yard punt. As uh, they flip possessions on the other side, I want to say a special thanks to Corky's Ribs and Barbecue for catering the food today. They have restaurants in Little Rock and North Little Rock. And uh, we, we know our buddy Joe Klein. Uh, he always tries to hook us up for these state championship games, and we appreciate him and everybody over at Corky's Barbecue for helping out today. Brady Hushison back to work, swings it out to Frazier. Frazier reverses his field. There's a flag down, two flags down in the backfield. Frazier gets a big gain, but we'll see if this stands. Jacquez Cross makes the stop for Fordyce. He had two penalty flags come down right there in the middle of the field. Here's the call. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty for spot the foul. First down. Big first down gain. Wiped out. Yep, that's kind of riding him down the backside there. Let's go down to the sidelines as we take a look at the rest of that replay and check in with Eric Sullivan. Eric. Yeah, Scott, injury update on Hagen Sullivan from uh, Four Dice. Uh, he's a senior, he's a linebacker, and he's hurt his knee pretty bad. He's in tears on the bench with his mom and dad and a prophecy, Ortho, Arkansas, Dr. Tucker and everybody. Mm -hmm. Big bag of ice on there. He will not return to the game, and uh, we wish him well. I know it's a tough one for a state championship game. All right, Eric, thanks. Hutchison airs it out, and he's going <laughs> to be aided by a penalty marker there. That looks like a clear pass interference. It was intended for Jeremiah Williams, and Williams a little slow to get up. Kind of fell awkwardly, but the Fordyce defender, Caleb Jones, right on top of him there when the ball was coming. Scott, you're starting to see for Junction City starting to air it out a little bit more. As it was a pass interference penalty there. They're starting to air it out a little and take some more chances. As I said, they're, they're running out of time. Really need to get a score here in the third quarter uh, to, to have a little bit of confidence going into that fourth quarter. Well, they've been running the football pretty well, but it has not been able to carry them into the end zone. So you do get the feeling it's going to be up to Hutchinson and his arm. He's 5 of 11 on the day, 74 yards, no touchdowns, of course, and the pick. And they've run the ball for 117 yards so far. Keep it on the ground with Cook. Cook bounces it outside. Spins out a one tackle, and that's a good gain on first down. He'll be marked out at the 44-yard line, an eight-yard pickup. Tristan Thrower with the tackle for Fordyce. It's 
Cook now 20 carries, 94 yards, so he is approaching 100 for the game. He's top 3,000 now for his career, and he gets a break on this play. It's Jamal Johnson in the backfield, and he gets the handoff. Cuts it upfield and gets close to the first down, should have it. It's going to be marked down right at the 47-yard line. Stop made by Joshua Harrington. That's a three-yard gain and good enough to move the chains. Yeah, that was a good run right there outside. Was able to cut it back in. And, you know, get another first down. You move the chains forward. You're under four to play now, and, and you've just got to find a way to get down there and, and get closer to, to get in the end zone. And really, this has been probably one of the more – efficient drives that Junction, has, Junction City's had so far in the game. First down and 10 for the Dragons. Still looking for their first points in this championship game. Under pressure, Hutchison airs it out, and a terrific grab at the 23-yard line by Devontae Gilbert. Boy, Scott, I, I think he may have gotten away with one right here. Watch at the end of this play. Got a little push off in the back, and... Here's the, here's the throw, watch this, he, he extends that arm, you couldn't quite see it right there, but it was able to get it off with the left hand, but what a great catch, and was able to come up with the, the catch and the first down. 30 yards on the pass play, and Junction City's in business. Hand off to Cook again, and Cook plows his way into the red zone, down to about the 19, stop made by Trey Merritt. That's gonna be a gain of four, it'll bring up a second down and six. Cook is sixth on the all-time rushing yardage list in Junction City history. That shows you what kind of career he's had. He came into the game needing just 23 yards to reach 3,000 for his career. Well over that now. Officially 97 in this game. And he's still in the ball game, and he gets the give again. Bounces it outside. Another flag's going to come in, and Cook may have been hit late out of bounds there, but it's right at the first down yard marker, and we'll see about the penalty marker. That would, if this play stands, send him over 100 for the game. Well, there's another penalty flag, Scott, over there at the 14-yard line, which is on that far sideline. So you've got two penalty flags down in different areas. Face mask on the defense. Holding on the offense. Penalties offset, replay second down. Wow. That's Let's, the second time you've had that same exact penalty combination. Let's head down to the sidelines and check in with Eric. At Scott, uh, some injuries piling up for Junction City. Jay Williams has a left ankle, and then pro arguably their best player, uh, Harlandis Frazier, having some side issues. The trainers are working with him right now. They need him out on the football field. I think he'll probably return. All right, Eric, thanks for the update. It's second down and six after the offsetting penalties. Hutchison fires it down the field incomplete, intended for Gilbert. There was, again, some contact there. And again, the Junction City faithful there who are in the end zone let the officials hear it. Caleb Jones on the coverage for Fordyce. Oh, while they get reset, I want to remind everybody, if you're interested in what's next in the AETN lineup, after the state championship football games, all you have to do is visit aetn.org backslash schedule to see what's coming up. You can see set program, or you can set program reminders for the shows if you don't want to miss them. Third and six. Obviously four down territory. Goes without saying, anytime either of these teams are on their opponent's end. And a timeout by the Dragons. That'll be their first of the half. We're going to take a break and be back to War Memorial. 229 left in the third. Fordyce leads it by two touchdowns. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner 
dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Cherokee Nation, our people, our culture, our history, our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. The deepest Junction City has driven in today's ball game, the 12 yard line. They fumbled it and Fordyce returned it 88 yards for the score. It's third and six at the 20 this time. Hutchinson going in zone and it is caught by Frazier for the touchdown. There is a penalty marker down back near the line of scrimmage. Wow, Scott, I mean, if this is a hold on Junction City, yeah, I believe that's what they're gonna call. And and the bad thing about it is it was away from the play. Holding on the offense. Two-yard penalty from start of foul. We play third down. Scott, that penalty came from the left tackle, which was really no bearing on the play. And, and you look right here, the, the hold was up by 78 on the outside, and it had no, nowhere near an effect on the, on the play, and it was a great catch. Pretty over the shoulder grab by Frazier. It's wiped out by the third yeah. holding call on this drive. Whistled against Junction City. And now they're way back at the 34 yard line. Instead of a touchdown, it's third and 20. Hutchinson going right back to the well. Incomplete, he overthrew it intended for Jeremiah Williams. You see the penalty yards there, five against Forest City, four now against Junction City, but three holding calls on this drive. Yeah, and the coaches say all the time, keep your turnovers low and your, your penalties low, and you've got a high success of, of trying to win a ball game. And right now, penalties just killing Junction City. They'll go for it on fourth and 20. Hutchinson. Shorter pass this time, connects with Williams and letting him try to break free, but he only makes it back to the original line of scrimmage. Montrell Neal with the stop for Fordyce, and the Red Bugs take over again. Well, it's just as good as a punt right there, Scott. Uh, you, you throw it down there, and now they've got inside the 25, and that's where Fordyce will go. And you, you've got to you got to rely on your defense right here. There's 2:09 left in the third. You got to rely on them to, to get some stops to give you some more possessions. Hey, if you want a copy of today's championship game, all you have to go to is m and &M Productions to place your order. I'm assuming m and Productions.com to get that production order. It says .net on our or screen. Or .net, there. excuse yeah. me. I, I apologize. m, -M Productions.net. First and 10, and the give to Hudson. Hudson with room. Good open field tackle for Junction City by Ja'Kyron Cook, or he was going to go for a while. Instead, he's held to a six-yard gain. Well, you talked about relying on your defense. Junction City's defense has gotten the job done in this third quarter. Yeah. There's no question about it. They've preserved time. They've kept Fordyce from getting into the end zone. They've kept this a manageable 14-0 game. But as you mentioned earlier in the quarter, they're just running out of possessions on offense. Yeah, down to a fast-moving third quarter, a minute 34 and counting, and You've got to find a way to get a stop. Again, one of the touchdowns for Fordyce defensive. It was an 88-yard fumble return, so the Junction City defense has only allowed one touchdown in this game. Shelton turns the corner. Another flag comes in, and this is probably coming back. Now you, you saw the minute he threw it there, there was a hold on the outside to, to allow him to spring free, and that's, this thing's going to get brought back. It feels like there have been more penalties than there have been. Yeah, I, I agree. I, it, I mean, it, it feels like that's this the tenth one. 
combined. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of foul. Replay second down. But that goes back to the timeliness of it. It yeah. seems like the penalties are always a wiping out or wiping out big plays. Yeah, and, and you know, it's one of the, that you see there's a hold right there on the outside. He, he just was able to flip him over and, and squash him. But, you know, I, it just – it's it's unfortunate. They are penalties. It's not okay. like these guys are not they're not doing their job. I mean, these are penalties that That's they've right. been throwing. Uh, it, it's just unfortunate because you see one team, whether it be Fort Ice or be Junction City, make a big play and it's negated by a penalty. Second and fourteen. The sweep with Hudson, and Hudson gets maybe a half yard. Boy, and that you don't want to see if you're Junction City. Oh, holding the back of his head. Caleb Jones is slow to get up. Now they've actually got, a, I thought a second player might actually be down, but that's still Caleb Jones. Oh, I'm sorry. I had the wrong team. That's Ford Ices. Thank you. Jemiah Carroll is down for Junction City. Oh, uh, he had, he, yeah, his helmet. He went helmet to helmet with one of his own players on the tackle. But he's up. And walking off the field, hopefully just got his bell rung a little bit. Well, this will be interesting right here, Scott. You've got third down and long for Fordyce. And... Uh, 13 yards to go. You're going to see them air it out. But, you know, the last time they, they did this, they went with the quarterback keeper on, on the design run. But they this time they're not spreading it out. Quick pass to Cross. And Cross is drunk, dumped immediately. And he's holding his leg as he goes down. Devontae Gilbert on the stop for Junction City. Hopefully that may just be a cramp. Yeah, yeah I think he's cramping up a little bit. And, Will credit the turf for that tackle that time. Now it's fourth down, and, and here's the thing that you don't want to get into, Scott, is that you know we've seen the punting woes out of Fordyce so far in this game. You need a, you need to have a punt like the last one they had, not yeah. like the previous three before that that were for one yard, ten yards, and about twelve yards. Yeah, that last one went for forty-five. That's yeah, what that, like that last one was really good. Yeah. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Eric. Eric, seems like the injuries are really stacking up for both teams now. Absolutely, Scott. Jamie Carroll is going through a concussion protocol right now for the Dragons, and not one but two Fordyce Red Bugs are cramping up and getting stretched out on their sideline as we speak. So uh, who can survive here as we've got a quarter and 26 seconds to go, fellas? You know, you, you think about it. When you get to these lower classifications on this weekend, it, it's it's worth reminding yeah. folks, those kids are playing every play. Yes. A lot of these kids are playing every snap on both sides of the football. Fordyce is not going to actually have – yeah, they are going to have to snap at the play clock a bit in front by a couple of seconds on the game clock. But that's a long game when you're in there for every snap. Well, the play clock goes to zero, and they're gonna, there's going to be a delay a game. I'm not sure they were aware of that because they didn't call timeout. I don't think this is where you want to take a five-yard penalty. Prior to the snap. Delay a game on the offense. Clock operator, please put three seconds on the clock. Tim Rogers is over there saying they should have reset the, the play clock, and they never did. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I thought they reset it. And so I don't know what his argument is right there. Either way, it's cost them five yards, and now they're going to punt it from the 15-yard line. Now they need a 50-yarder instead of 45. Yeah, yeah. Darius Sledge dropped the snap, and the punt is blocked. Ball is loose on the field. It is scooped up by Junction City. It'll be marked down at the six-yard line. What a break for the Dragons. Cam Torrance, the junior, out of there with it. The block by Kyle Kidwell. Oh, that's a great job as he came in a little on the replay, just came in and was able to dive. And Good thing he, he was able to get a hold and get a piece of that one because if not, he, he fell right into the punter and 
Could have had running into the punter, but great job getting the block, the block and now they're set up with their best field position of the day. That's the end of the third quarter at War Memorial Stadium, and Junction City will be on the doorstep when we start the fourth. One of the best things about being a community-focused bank like Centennial is that we encourage our employees to volunteer and give back. That's why our bankers are often seen around town involved in activities that have less to do with money matters and more to do with supporting others. From charity events and disaster relief to Chamber of Commerce and civic activities, we enjoy rolling up our sleeves and helping make our community a better place. See for yourself the difference our local commitment can make. More information available at mileandhunterbank.com. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. As time passes and the years go by, change is something we all experience. But no matter how the world changes from year to year, the one thing that will never change is the true meaning of Christmas. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May your holidays be filled with joy and blessings. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from all of us at Everett. Well, the turnovers have been the story in this game. In the first half, the Red Bugs captured three of them. And in this third quarter, and now as we move into the fourth quarter, Junction City trying to capitalize on the ones they've gotten. Cook gets the carry on first and goal on the first play of the fourth quarter. Trey Merritt makes the stop. It's a four-yard gain, so it's second down and goal from the two. Big swing here for Junction City. Well, this is huge because if you get in the end zone right here early in this fourth quarter, you got the rest of the quarter to try to tie up the ball game. You're not trying to chase two scores here in a single quarter. On second and goal, Cook gets the direct snap out of the Wildcat. And he is shy of the goal line. No gain. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and third and goal's coming up. Sam Allen made the stop. Boy, that defense is stout. And they are, you know, they're, they're, they're just putting back their ears and saying we're not going to give anything up the middle. And I think if you're Junction City, if you want to try to get this thing in the end zone, work it outside the tackles a little bit and try to stretch the field. Flag is down on the far sideline, so this play is not going to happen now. Here's Scott Earlywine. Sideline warning on Fordyce. Third down and goal. Johnson in to take the direct snap. And Johnson is close. The ball squirts out into the end zone, and it's recovered by Junction City I, I, for the touchdown. I don't know, Scott. They may have to review that one. I, I thought he, he was down at the half-yard line before it squirted out. Let's check on the replay and see because it seemed like his backside was on the turf before it popped out. There he is. No, it was coming out. There was a, as he made the, made the turn. He was he was down. Ball was in the end zone, and so it is a touchdown for Junction City. Kyle Kidwell recovers it in the end zone for the score, and Junction City, as they've done all year, will go for two. Johnson again lined up at quarterback. And they'll hand it off in the fumble. The exchange was really never made and intended for Ivory. And so the two-point conversion fails, and that's that's a big one. It's an eight-point lead for Fordyce. But, you know, we talked about these teams not being very good at special teams. It was a special teams play that yeah. set up that touchdown. Let's go down to Eric. 
All right, guys, first of all, Ja'Karron Cook of Junction City. He's having cramping problems, but he's back yeah. up off the bench, so that's a good sign for Junction City. And some of the officials that are kind of just monitoring this game felt like right before the third quarter ended, they did not start that. They started the play clock way too early after the injury. And think about it now, Scott and RJ. That uh, five yards uh, got them a little rattled. They got the block punt. Now they're on the uh, scoring uh, getting it on the board to make it 14 to 6, but uh, some officials down here saying they kind of started that a little too early. And look how big of a play on something we think is so small could determine the outcome of this football game and in a state championship game, guys. Yeah, Scott, you know, I mean, Tim Rogers was over there pleading his case, saying, you know, he, he kept pointing up to the play clock, saying, well, what, what's going on? And I think that's what he his argument was, was that maybe the, the clock started just a touch too early. Either way, that's over now, and, and it's it's a eight point game and that's the big thing right now not getting that two point conversion if junction city were to score again they've now to, they've got to score and get a two point conversion uh, kickoff there dropped but it falls harmlessly out of bounds jaquez cross trying to field it but fordice will start their possession so a fumble to start the third quarter on offense for fordice and then the blocked punt, and really that was set up by the snap. The snap was a little low and bobbled by the punter. That gave that extra half second for the special teams to get in there and make that block. That leads directly to the only touchdown for Junction City so far. So how will the Red Bugs offense respond? They're going to spread it out. Jaheim Brown, he has shown us he can fling it. Quick release. Out to Sledge, and Sledge is going to get out to about the 33-yard line. That's about three on the play. Second and seven coming up, and a little bit of emotion there after the play by Sledge. Took exception to well, maybe what was going on on the pile there. Well, the thing Fordyce needs to do right now, being in the fourth quarter, everything needs to be a positive play. Keep that clock rolling as they're about to be under 10 minutes to play in the game. They've got to have that clock just continually roll uh, and not have any negative plays or things that are going to stop the clock here in, in the fourth quarter. The handoff to Hudson, and Hudson will lose yardage back at the 30-yard line. It's a loss of three. Jamarco Singleton got him for Junction City. And that right place uh, shot the gap that time for Singleton. He was able to get in there and have a lost yardage play, and now you're back to the original first down marker, so you've got third and 10 at the 30, coming up on the nine minute mark. How about that? On third down today, two of eight for Fordyce. Brown, under pressure, throws it into the ground, and the Red Bugs will give it back to Junction City. You can kind of feel that momentum, Scott, for Junction City, that the momentum in the, in the stadium just kind of shift a little bit. That defensive pressure starting to step up for Junction City. That's a big time stop for Junction City right here as they're going to get great field position for their second drive here in the fourth quarter. The last two games in these two championship weekends have seen the Mercy rule invoked. We only had one really close one, and that was Cersei over Benton 28-27, but this one, was going down to the final horn, it certainly looks like. Sledge gets this kick away. It's another pretty good one. Spinning kick, fielded and dropped at the 40. Frazier trying to get under it, and I think Fordyce has it. The Red Bugs do have the football. Mantrell Neal. Scott, you know how I just said how old Moe's changing in this game? Momentum just switched switch back over to the Fordyce side. It's quickly how that happens. It is. Well, that, so now Fordyce is going to have it with great field position in Junction City territory. And really, on, on the punt return, just took his eyes off of it. Went right between his legs, and he couldn't find it. And Fordyce was in there to jump on it and make the, make the recovery. Hey, do you have a young rider in your family? The PBS Kids Riders Contest begins January the 1st. It's easy to submit online. All you have to do is go to aetn.org backslash riders contest. So Fordyce gets a gift. Let's see if they can 
capitalize. Swing pass out to Jones, and Caleb Jones is going to be fortunate to make it back to the line of scrimmage. I think he lost yardage on the play. And he ran into one of his own guys. The, the play was set up, and I think one of his own guys made the tackle. Well, Fordyce, even if they don't come away from this with points, if they could just get a couple of first downs and burn some of this clock, I think they would still consider it a success. Shelton goes in motion. They look to him, but Brown's going to try to tuck it and run, and he's going to lose yardage. Now that time, Scott, they just had a jailbreak blitz on that time by Junction City as coming up the middle was DeAndre Malone who just shot the gap and, and his key was the quarterback the entire time. Nobody touched him, just straight up the middle, was able to go in there and help take the, the quarterback down. Kyle Kidwell with the tackle and now it's third and 11. Scott, you know what's crazy about the situation we're in right now? You know the first time these two teams played, 14, Junction. 12. Junction City won 14 to 12. I was thinking the same thing. Brown, deep ball, far sidelines into double coverage, and it's incomplete, but penalty markers all over the place. Caleb Jones almost came down with it. But this looks like it may be pass interference. DeAndre Malone and Ja'Kyron Cook converging on the coverage, and Jones is slow to get up. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Result in the penalty, first down. RJ, timely penalties. We've yeah. talked about it all broadcast long. You managed to make that play without a penalty, and you're getting the football back. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that right there. And look, you, you had double coverage. You had bracket coverage on the outside, and, you know, throws the ball up, and you just don't interfere with him. I, I was looking right here. Yeah, there's the, the interference right there. If you just keep your hand off of him and box him out, you essentially knock the ball down or intercept it, and, and you're done with the, the series. Brown firing over the middle incomplete, and he had a man. It was intended for Trey Hudson. Hudson couldn't hang on. I think they would be looking again for Jaquez Cross at some point. 55 catches coming into the game, 17.5 per catch. He had 962 yards. He's only caught three today for 13. Brown throws it up. Dangerous pass falls to the turf at the five-yard line, and it's going to be third down. I think that was a miscommunication, Scott. There were three dragons in the area and only one red bug. I don't know if that was either the right read or the right play. Hey, fans, if you want to continue the football conversation on social media, all you have to do is use that hashtag, AETM Sports. Third down and 10. Clock is stopped after the incompletion. Shelton is the running back. Here we go. Firing back over the middle. It's caught by Hudson, and Hudson will have the first down for Fordyce. Big catch by the senior, 14 yards. You know, one thing, I, and a coach just texted me this, that uh, you see a lot of people slipping down in this game. Uh, both these team, teams play on natural grass. Uh, back in their homes and whether it's you know whether it's a, a slick turf or or just not used to playing on turf both these teams play most of their games on on natural grass throughout the year so uh, it's a good point i yeah, didn't even probably, think about that probably not the case for the larger classifications yeah. either most yeah. of those guys now have gone to turf but first and ten fordyce trying to deliver the knockout blow it's a keeper by jaheem brown and Brown gets about two, but the clock continues to tick. So Junction City has two timeouts. 
Obviously not going to think about taking it now, but just as we get ahead of things, as the clock continues to roll, and they think about when they get the football back, would be very difficult if Fordyce could put another touchdown on the board. Play clock is under five as Brown goes under center. We haven't seen any of this all day. The handoff to Shelton, and Shelton's going to score the Fordyce touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown run by Quartee Shelton, and that may just do it. Went with the inside hand, handoff that time and was able to avoid one tackler and just go for the end zone. That, that's a great run. That's what Fordyce has been wanting to do all game long, and it finally worked here in the latter part of the fourth quarter. On well, the two-point conversion will really make it difficult. So this could come into play, too, if Junction City is able to score again. So this is still a pretty big play right here. You're talking about 13 or 15. You'd only be able to tie if they score twice down 15. You'd have to get both conversions. And the conversion is good. Brown into the end zone. And that will make it a 15-point game. So that'll put the pressure on if Junction City scores twice. They'll have to get both two-point conversions to be able to win the football game. And that's a tough task with 5.58 to play here in the, in the game. And they've only scored six points up to this point, trying to get two scores. It's going to be an uphill battle. 5.58 left in the 2A title game. And Fordyce building their lead. Back in a moment. Anywhere, on nearly any device, it's easy with the free PBS Video app. Simply download the PBS Video app on your mobile or streaming device. Now you can watch the latest PBS episodes or catch up on the shows you missed. And when you support your local station, you can get PBS Passport, giving you access to more episodes, more specials, more of what you love. Get the free PBS Video app now and stream the best of PBS anytime you want, anywhere you are. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. A 22-6 lead for the Fordyce Redbugs with 5.58 left to play in the game. The 2A state championship game. The pressure definitely on Junction City now with two timeouts and not a whole lot of time, and they need two scores. Somebody's got to field the kickoff, and Fordyce fields the kickoff. Well, as they say down in Fort Ice in South Arkansas, I'm pretty sure you can say the hay's in the barn of this one. That, that may just do it right there. He's worked the clock off and, and, and really make it hard on Junction City. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Eric. All right, Scott, I was just on the Junction City sideline. Uh, Coach Smith is trying to get his guys to focus, focus. I think that last touchdown really hit him in the, hit him in the heart right there. But then you have this happen, and I tell you what, this is not going to be a happy ending for Junction City. But give it up to those Red Bucks. I kind of was shocked they kept throwing the ball in that last drive, but they wanted to deliver that knockout punch. Hudson with a big run on first down for Fordyce, and he delivers a lick at the end of that run, DeAndre Malone makes the stop for Junction City, but he paid for it. Yeah, he, he definitely paid for it, but got now you, you've got a, a 40 second play clock to work with. Clock's gonna continue to, ro to roll as it's second down and one. Board ice. You even can start to sense it now. Tim Rogers trying to get the Red Bugs, a state championship for the first time since 1991. And all they really have to do is hang on to the football. That first down by Brown as he bounces it outside. Don't go out of bounds. <laughs> he gets hit out of bounds. He was trying to he was trying. put on the brakes. He, but 
He, he was like, hold up. I, I don't want to go over there. That will move the chains, though, and allow Fordyce to roll another 90 seconds to two minutes off the clock, possibly. Well, what can you say? The Red Bucks fought through a lot of adversity in that third quarter. They got the benefit of three turnovers and an 88-yard fumble return for a touchdown in the first half. But the third quarter belonged to Junction City. Now Shelton on the carry for a short gain, and the clock continues to roll. Junction City now has not had the football since the 10-30 mark in the fourth quarter. So Fordyce with all these turnovers and have been able to keep Junction City's offense off the field. And now they're just trying to run the clock out and win a state championship. Junction City has had four turnovers today that have led to 14 points for Fordyce. Second down. And eight. Hand off to Shelton. And Shelton is snowed under right about the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of one, in fact. And there's a timeout. Junction City's going to burn one of their timeouts here on a third down and long coming up. Total yardage. That's quite amazing when you look at this. 252 Junction City, 181 Fordyce. But I mean, once you you've got four turnovers, you know I, I mean seven points came from an 88-yard scoop and score from for, for Fordyce. So I mean, you know those numbers can be a little bit deceiving as well. And so um, yeah, but you know 252 yards of offense for for Junction City is not bad. Hey, Scott, AATN is proud to bring high school football and the finals live right here on AATN. But we'll be back in March with the basketball finals. And new in May, the baseball and softball state finals all can be seen right here on AATN. Well, we mentioned this earlier. We're talking about the turnovers. They're plus three today. That makes them plus 29 four dices on the season. Yeah. That, that, that's astounding. They came into this game with 32 takeaways and only six turnovers themselves. Captured four more today with only one turnover against them. That wins football games. Even when they only put up 181 yards of offense. They're going to put up some more offense here. Shelton to the pylon. Did he get there? He is out of bounds, and a flag comes flying in again at the half-yard line. Well, they're, they're going to call the penalty on a crackback block, say that it, he hit a defensive, defenseless guy. I, I'm assuming that's what they're going to call because that, that came in very late, and I don't know if you I, – I just don't know if I agree with that. I understand you want to protect players and, and everything like that, but kid was just trying to seal off the edge so that it, his guy could get in a score. It, it wasn't a blindside, really, as he wheeled back and got in front of him. We'll see what the call is. After the play, first to foul. Late hit out of bounds. Half the distance is gone. First down. I, I didn't see that, but okay. Where, where he threw the penalty flag, it, it was in the area of where the kid came back for the crackback. And, and you can see it right here on the replay. Is, there's, there's the setup, and I guess there is an, a, a late hit out of bounds. See, so he's out right. Yeah, that's, I don't know, it's close, but. Well, it only moves it from the half-yard line to the three-inch line. That may be the shortest penalty yardage in the history of football right there, <laughs> marked off. Brown under center on first down and goal. He will give it to Shelton, and Shelton has the touchdown. And the Red Bucks put the exclamation point on their soon-to-be state championship. You don't think those folks over on the the Fordyce sideline are going to have some fun on the way back to South Arkansas tonight, do you? Let me tell you, I think they all showed up at the same time, by the way. <laughs> the, when I got here about two hours before kickoff, 
I thought it was a Razorback game, the way the traffic was coming in trying to get into the parking lot. I mean, you look out over the east side wall where we stand, there's cars parked up on the grass around the zoo and over in the UAMS parking lot. Uh, there's a lot of folks from Fort Ice that made their way up here. It must have been a caravan coming, yeah. up, coming up the highway. Fort Ice will go for two, and this, again, not the pylon. They just don't kick extra points. They're going to do a little, little razzle-dazzle, and a halfback pass is incomplete. Sledge through the pass low, intended for Hudson, and it will stay 28 to 6 with 3.36 left to go. Six plays, 36 yards, and two, how about this, Scott? Six plays, 36 yards, took two minutes and 22 seconds. I mean, that's killing some clock right there, and, um, you know, Fort Ice, it's been since 1991 since they won a state championship, and, they, uh, they put on a performance today. Well, it is rare for Junction City. It's not rare for Junction City to make it to the championship game. It is rare for them to lose a championship game. Seven titles in their previous nine appearances. They were seven and two in the state championship game coming in to this one. Well, and Scott, I, I think the other thing is it's very rare that you see a Junction City team in any game, whether it be a state championship or not, only score six points. Good, too, yep. It's a good point. 47 points per game, their average this year. But Fordyce has done what they had to do. Junction City will start at about their own 38-yard line. The celebration can begin in the stands. It will probably soon begin on the sidelines as well. Fordyce is going to bring a state trophy home for the first time in almost 30 years. Isn't it crazy to think? 1991 was 30 years ago. Yeah, that's the year I graduated high school. <laughs> so I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I mean, Being th that means my 30-year <laughs> reunion is coming up. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Brady Hutchison with a deep drop, flinging it way across the field, and it's intercepted again. There's a flag down. This may be coming back. Down the sidelines goes Neal. Neal's going to try to get a pick six. Two more flags come in. And Neal scores as a Fordyce player down back at the 20-yard line. And there are three flags on the field. Scott, it couldn't be a big play without a penalty flag. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be the story of today. Two came in post-possession, but the other one may allow Junction City to keep the football. Looks like it's going to be pass interference prior to the interception. Scott Earlywine, our referee today, he's had a lot of flags to sort out. By the way, how about the size of some of those flags? They, yeah. they look like they've got tails they, on them. They, they look like parachutes <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they've got tails on them. Here's Mr. Earlywine. Maybe. Yeah, he thought about it and said, I, I got to go over here in conference. We have blocking the back on the return by the defense. That penalty declined. We have pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Result of penalty, first down. All right, so it's what we thought pass interference during the pass. So no possession change, and Junction City will keep the football. Let's go down to Eric. Uh, yeah, Scott, before all that stuff went down with the offensive pass interference, I got confirmation from the uh, officials that uh, Harlandis Frazier, after the uh, Fordyce Red Bug dove for the pylon, he came in a little late and jumped on top of him, and that what is what caused the personal foul. All right, Eric well, Hutchison's going to be picked off again. Jaquez Cross with his 10th interception of the year brings it back into Junction City territory. I mean, back-to-back -back plays, Scott, get intercepted, and this one counts, so, and that's going to seal it. You know, you can go with 2.56 left, 
Junction City's got one timeout remaining. Go out there and, and run it. Let the 40-second play clock roll down, and you can pretty much seal this one off. Dragons do have one timeout if they choose to use it at this point, but it's all academic now. Just seven seniors on this Fordyce team, by the way. Of course, a lot of guys are playing both ways, so may only have about 25 or so players that are playing a lot of snaps. RT <laughs> Shelton with a carry for no gain. So you think about that, Eric, they're going to have a lot of players coming yeah. back. Yeah, they, they really are. And uh, I mean, this is th this is what fans in Fordyce expect. You know, I, you almost say, well, it's been 30 years since you won a state championship, but they love their football down in Fordyce. Such and, history. And, and the fact that yeah, I mean, look at look at the stands. I mean, they've got as many people over there that, as what we saw in the five, six, and seven, eight games last weekend. And, and uh, people that don't even live in Fordyce, some Ryzen folks, their their arch rival came. I I was getting text a moment ago said, "Hey, I'm from Ryzen, but I want to go see Fordyce do this thing." The handoff to Hudson, and Hudson stopped after a short gain. When you think about, you talk about that history. You mentioned Bear Bryant Stadium named after him. We didn't talk in the first half about Jimmy Red Parker, another, no. another legend yeah. to come out of the Arkansas coaching, uh, Arkansas coaches. He, of course, coached at Fordyce early on, then had great success as a college coach at yeah. Clemson. Ended up at OBU and then helped start uh, Benton Harmony Grove, start yeah. their program. Won their first game, passed away just about three years ago. A lot of history in Fordyce when it comes to high school football. The Red Bugs may not get the first down, but they're going to take it at least under a minute on offense. Handoff to Shelton. Shelton stays in bounds. Another penalty marker comes in. And another and another. We've got three on the field again. Wow. Looked like at least one of them was yeah. after the whistle. I don't know how often the penalty flags wear out, but they may have to replace them after this game. There are two penalties on the play. Line side block on the offense. After the play, unsportsmanlike content on the defense. Third down. Well, this actually helps Fordyce because now they get to run another play. Yeah. 118 on the clock and instead of fourth down it's going to be third down over again i want to remind everybody for a copy of any of the state championship games go to mnmproductions.net that's mnmproductions.net to place your order and Redbug fans you can now purchase your state championship merchandise online by going to arkansashighschoolsports.com image one is the official merchandise provider for the triple a you know we were talking about famous names of people down in that area and uh, I always hear the radio commercial for Larry Lacewell, yeah, who, uh, yeah. Arkansas State, Dallas Cowboy. His, his radio commercial always says, I was a red bug, a jigger, a whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Larry Lacewell from down the Port Ice area. That's right. Third down. Give is to Shelton. Shelton will have the first down, so Fort Ice will not have to give the football back. They can snap the football probably one more time. And this will be over. Coach Rogers gets his, he's, he's still giving instructions <laughs> as he gets the ice water bath. Didn't even flinch over there on the sidelines. Trying to get the play call in and his guys are pouring him, pouring water over him. Play clock is down to six, now five. Depending on how long this play lasts, they may have to snap it one more time. Well, they're going to go right to a knee, so they may have to snap it one more time. Yeah, yeah there's going to be about two seconds different between the game clock and the play clock, and so they have to do it one more time. You know, Scott, we talked about in the pregame, these two towns 
separated by roughly 60 miles. Mm -hmm. They know each other. They go hang out. You know, both coaches told us on Monday that these guys go hang out with each other uh, when they're not playing one another. And mm -hmm. these that they have a ton of respect for one another, but uh, you can just see the emotion by some of these Fort Ice players. This is something special to not only win their first state championship in, not, in 30 years, but do it against this team. The long wait is over. For the first time since 1991, the Fordyce Redbugs are state champs. It was, for the most part, a defensive dominated football game. Only 226 yards of total offense for Fordyce. But they got a defensive touchdown, and they won the turnover battle, and they win it by a score of 28 to 6. What a game. What, I mean, you know, when we when we first started, the way the two defenses were, were going, I, I said at one point, said, this is going to be a slobber knocker. But you know what? It, it really, defensively, it held up for the, the entire first half. And then Fordyce just, they took over and, and got the job done. And uh, they proved to be the better team today. All right, I, I put Bobby on the spot last night. Yes. For MVP, as you take a look at the uh, quick final stats that they brought us. I, I think it's easy for me. Yeah. I, I think Ja'Kyron Cook is the, is the uh, MVP of this one. 23 carries, 101 yards. Uh, rushing, then Ja'Kyron receiving one reception for 38 yards, then kick returns, had one kick return for nine yards, and then tackles he led with 12. Uh, and I say, I know that's Junction City, but that's my MVP for Junction City. Yep. And then you look at you Ford, I said, we gave, by the way, the reason I do two is because uh, I also do the radio broadcast, and we always do two MVPs for both schools. Gotcha. Uh, and then for Fordyce, my other MVP would be uh, – uh, I think I'd have to go with the area Sledge. Uh, Sledge was all over the field uh, in the rushing department, 16 carries for 35 yards, three touchdowns, uh, punting, uh, five punts, 155 yards. Uh, just did it all today for, uh, for four dice. He also had nine tackles. Yeah. I would go with that one. As we go down to the sidelines, Eric has Harlandis Frazier. Eric. Actually, we got Sam Allen, guys. He's oh. the young man that yes. uh, got Sorry. this thing going on defense at 88 yards. You literally just took the ball the guy's hands up. What, what was your reaction to do that? You, I guess you're taught it's to just, do that. It's just football sense. It's just football sense. And I seen the ball, he was holding it loose, and I just came and got it. <laughs> This game, uh, you played them before and they got you. Y'all pretty motivated for this one, not only because of the state finals, but a pretty good rivalry game with those guys, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. They played a, they played a good game. Them, them boys was, they was hard. We. <laughs> All right, uh, y'all haven't done this since 1991. What's it feel like to be a state champ? It feel like heaven. <laughs> feel like heaven. Hey, man, go celebrate with your teammates. Heck of a play you made there, buddy. Thank you. Oh, that is great. <laughs> like him. Uh, he, he sounded like he was out of breath yeah. after yeah. Uh, he's still breathing hard from running that 88 yards back on the uh, on the scoop and score. That came at a big moment. You know, when you think about it, what time that happened in the second quarter, it was a 7 nothing game. Fordyce was only up by a touchdown, and Junction City was at the 12-yard line of the Red Bugs. They go in there and tie the game, right? Yeah. So he strips it. Heads up play. It was indeed a forced turnover, not an unforced turnover, and returns at 88 yards for the score to go up two touchdowns. And Fordyce never looked back. Eric's with another red bug. One of my favorite players in this game, Court T. Shelton. You're uh, you're the guy, the workhorse, the running back. What's it feel like, man? It feel great. It just feel great. Wonderful, man. We're working this all year long, man. Just working all year. It's a great feeling. What about this crowd? That's the whole town of four guys. They love their football there, don't they? So they always behind us, man. They always behind us. Just got a, this game was scrappy early. The, I think they had more total yards than y'all did, but y'all just kind of found a way to get in the end zone, didn't you? Yes, sir. What was the key to that? Just had to go make adjustments in the locker room, make sure the line block right and everything. It just got it done, man. School going to be out, let out next week? <laughs> nah, we got to take tests. <laughs> well, go do good on those, Corti. All right. <laughs> I will go try to find the quarterback guys here in just a minute. Thank you, Eric. You got to go back and take tests. I love it. I love it. 
Sam Allen is going to be named the MVP of this game for his 88-yard fumble return as Fordyce head coach Tim Rogers will join us in the postgame show before we leave you this afternoon. His Red Bugs winners 28-6. They get set to hand the trophy to the Red Bugs, and we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back to War Memorial Stadium in just a moment. You'll find there's never a dull moment in this house. Welcome to Downton. Heavens, we are quite a party. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by... The Cherokee Nation. Our people. Our culture. Our history. Our future. To learn more, go to visitcherokeenation.com and say hello to the Cherokee Nation. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas to provide reliable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. John's Honda, your hometown dealer for sales and service of Honda motorcycles, ATVs, Honda generators, and Honda lawnmowers. Family owned and operated since 1967, John's Honda offers factory certified technicians and experienced sales staff. It's going to be a fun ride back to Fordyce tonight. The Red Bugs hoisting their state trophy after beating Junction City 28-6 here in the 2A state title game in Little Rock. We take a look at some of the numbers from the game. We mentioned that Junction City outgained Fordyce 252 yards to 226 yards and held that rushing game of Fordyce pretty much in check. But it was timely passing, the deep ball effective when it needed to be, and, of course, the turnovers at the bottom of your screen, five against Junction City and one for Fordyce. So a plus four in the turnover margin makes the difference in this game. Scott, I, you know, I, I think I want to be a part of the party that's going to take place in Fordyce tonight because that, <laughs> that is going to be a fun time. And uh, you can imagine that the, uh, the parade is being planned right now. And, I, I, look, I, I've been doing this for, for 12 years, calling these state championship games. There is nothing better than seeing a team win their very first state title or a team that hasn't done it in a really long time win a state championship. And, uh, it's always fun to see, and, and I am happy for uh, the Fort Ash Red Bugs. That's a great scene there, too. Allen just finding out he's the MVP, and he bounced up from his squatting position to, when he heard that news announced over the PA, and now he's getting deposed with his head coach, Tim Rogers. What a moment for that young man. Yeah, and think about in a state championship game, you know, there's a lot of big plays, but how often do a, does a kid or a player get to have an 88-yard scoop and score, essentially? I say it's a scoop and score. It was really more of a takeaway and run. Strip and score. Yeah, yeah. yeah a strip and score. Uh, but for 88 yards and a touchdown, you don't get that very often. And for he'll always remember that play. Uh, he'll, he'll be our age, and, and he'll be remembering that he had that 88-yard run at the state championship game. Well, Tim Rogers told Eric at halftime they liked what they had done so far, but they had to finish the game. Eric, I guess he finished the game. Well, that's right, Scott. Uh, Coach Rogers with us. You just mentioned you've uh, done this for 34 years. Has it ever been a better feeling than what you, uh, what's going through with not only your team, yourself, but this whole community? No, it, it's 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 amazing, and I'm just so proud of course, the town and the players and everything, and that's okay. uh, that's what I'm proud of more than anything for them. And uh, like I said, I, I thank the Lord every day that I get to coach and teach and live in Fort Ice and raise my kids there. And, and for the town to have this again, it's been a, you know it's been a long time. I mean, I was there in '90 and '91, but uh, when you get to coach one yourself, and uh, you know, I learned a lot from Coach Cox, Coach yeah. Cox in '1991, and Coach Baxley. Those guys were there, and I got to work with them, and there were some great coaches, and uh, you know, I learned a lot, and I remember that this year, and you know, I, I just am so proud that the town, the community, the kids just, just stepped up when we needed to. We were having trouble kind of deciding who would be the most valuable player. Uh, Coach, to me, you had so many guys chip in on defense. You had some big plays. Your quarterback really got into it in that second half. I mean, it truly was everybody stepping up today to win this title. 
Right, that's one of the things as far as our team. You know, some games one player would have a lot of stats and next game another player would. And uh, it was that way the whole year. I mean, we didn't have a lot of guys with big stats all the way across the board. It was just different players making plays every ball game. And, you know, we just kept telling our kids that all year long. Just, you know, just play as a team, take care of things. And individual stuff will happen every now and then. And uh, today, I mean, I was, I was so proud for Sam winning that. I mean, that play right before half, I thought kind of it kind of helped us a lot as far as getting over the hump because the first time we played them, you know, we turned the ball over up for half and let them score a touchdown and go ahead of us. This time, you know, they were driving down there to score and we were the ones who got the turnover and scored. All right, we got a Bear Bryant plaque, a Coach Cox plaque. How about a Coach Rogers plaque down in Fort Dodge? I think you've earned it, man. Uh, no, that, that's, <laughs> that's one of the things more than anything else that I know that it's not me. I, I just thank the Lord that I get an opportunity to do that. and. And I, right now, my, my eyes kind of tear up because, you know, I wish my dad could be here. I mean, my dad, I wanted my dad to be here to see me win a state championship. You know, he died a few years ago, but, you know, just to, you know, just to be part of this community and stuff. And it's not about me. It's about them. Hey, congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much. With your team. Thank you. All right, very touching moment there, Scott and RJ. Uh, we all, I lost my dad a few years ago, so I bet you he was watching down today to take care of Coach Rogers. And the Red Bugs, they are state champs, guys. Yeah, congratulations to Coach Rogers. You really are happy for him. You're happy for that community. Yeah. The football team, that means a lot down there in South Arkansas. They love their football. They pride themselves on it. And for Fordyce, that was a long drought yeah. all, since 1991. So it feels good, I'm sure, tonight all over that area. You won't find a more humble humble guy than coach Rogers yeah. and you know when you and I talked to him earlier this week uh, uh, he was a man of not so many words and, yeah. and he wanted it to really be all about his team not about him not anything like that and, and you just heard right there in that interview with Eric that uh, he wished he could have had his dad sit there and see that first state championship and uh, you know his dad was watching down on, on this game and and watching coach Rogers and this Fordyce team get a, a state championship and uh, like I said uh, I would like to be at that party tonight in, in Fordyce because it's going to be a good time down in Fordyce. Well, you can't do that. you got to come back. I do. We've got one more to go. I do, and it's going to be a great one. That 3A yeah. championship is going to be a lot of fun. want to remind everybody that if you are a Red Bug fan and uh, you want to go and get some official championship merchandise, all you have to do is go online to ArkansasHighSchoolSports.com. Image One is the official uh, merchandise provider for the AAA, and you can go on and get that state championship gear now by going to ArkansasHighSchoolSports.com. All right, our final one still to come, 635 kickoff, Harding Academy and Osceola in the 3A championship game. We hope you'll join us then. Goodbye for now from War Memorial Stadium.